Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And uh, the day, the podcast is brought to you by the Not a Motherfucking Soul. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I see Diddy's return. See Diddy's return. See Diddy's back, and we don't have no pre rolls. You no know what that means? Pre-roll. Somebody ain't been on their motherfucking job. He's been chilling in no. Asia, getting cheap massages. No, it's Chris been in Asia working on this goddamn book I got about to come out in March. Oh, word? Absolutely. Oh, word? Book will be out in March, baby. Now, is that part of the budget? Did he have to pay for you, you had to pay for him to go to Asia so he could work and get a comfortable workspace? Um, no. You never know about these things. Chris, getting a nice, Chris got a nice little advance, okay? All right. All right. Chris, Chris can make sure. money out here. That book business is kind of lucrative. All right. Well, but I, it seems like it's, I don't know, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's like very hard work for an author. I mean, the money seems good, but it just seems like it's very, very, very tough work. I don't know if the, if the reward balances out with the work that Especially is actually put in. Especially when you don't get the credit. Hey, talk on this. Chris gets the credit? Chris, Chris not getting the credit. He's writing all the books. Hold on one second. Where's the other mic? Is, 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 does it balance out, Chris? It's a lot of work. It definitely is a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, I saw uh, Jazz Fly tweet the other day that being a writer is like having homework for every day of your life. Mm. And there's there's definitely something to be said for that. Like, it's it's stress because, you know, like... There's a lot that goes into it, but I enjoy it. Listen, I, I have credit, Chris. Do you get the credit? He gets That's credit. The how book. so? He gets a little ass name. No, he writes said, all Russell says, Simmons books. And always says, Everybody Chris knows Monroe. Russell. Nobody knows need, Chris. I don't, I don't need credit, though. I mean, look, I'm, a, I'm at the point where everyone in the industry who needs to know who I am knows who I am. Mm. So whether it's my name in big letters, tiny letters, not at all. Like, it don't matter. Like, okay. So the people that need you gotta, to know, know. It's like any industry. You got to establish a track record. Once you establish that you can do it and successfully, then you're on. You're you know you're in the loop. Yeah, I mean, I have a newfound respect for uh, authors because I write, but it's the difference between writing and writing a fucking book. Chris, where are you going? Because I know the stuff that I send. Put a chair up, man. I know the stuff. <laughs> Chris just left the conversation like this is like he's finished over Listen, here. No. I know the stuff that I send, Chris. Mm-hmm. Is, is 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 he sends it back to me, but he sends it back to me like times ten, like it's formatted like a fucking book. Okay, let me ask you this: Can you apply that same thing to the advertisements that you write for our show, so I don't sound like a fucking retard every week when I'm trying to Dude. rifle through these okay. these fucking advertisements, fucking up words? I'm gonna read your grammar perfectly. No, I didn't do this one. I didn't do this one. Who did this one? Uh, Ty. All right. I don't know who that is. I don't but, know who okay. Ty is. Yeah, yeah. We got a tie? Sound like we paying him. Yeah, what the fuck <laughs> going on here, son? You can't bring back a whole country. Tie? What happened? You went to Asia? You just hiring motherfuckers now? I thought that was food. Thai food? <laughs> Thai food? You got <laughs> what the fuck? All right, so you guys got the book coming out. The book will be out in March. How big is the font for Chris's name going to be? Yeah, let's let's, negotiate, let's, let's yeah. negotiate the font right now, because right now Chris probably sent with an eight. I think Chris deserves at least a fourteen courier. I wasn't even thinking about using his name. I think about using C Diddy and um for for you listen, would. For, you <laughs> would. for listen. You know why? Because Charlamagne could also be C Diddy. You getting double listen, credit? Listen, first Let's of all, all first of all, thinking. first of all, my name is long, uh-huh. and the title of the book is long. So, you ain't so no, I don't know. Chris, no might, <laughs> Chris might have to settle with a picture on the inside or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You got no font, Chris. Where your font at? Chris, the title's long, Chris. Where are we going to put your name? <laughs> He's boiling inside right now. Truthfully, like, I don't even, I mean, you're not supposed to say this, but it don't matter to me. But I'm not oh, like everybody else, on. though. Because I'm the one, I'm like, people know I'm writing the book with Chris. Like, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you give credit. You give too much credit. Nah, there's no such thing. There, there, there have been people who don't want to give me credit. Like, there have been people who I've had. Russ? No, Russell is, Russell was cool as shit. Like, he didn't give a fuck. Like, yeah. I mean, it's been interesting to me watching this whole thing with, um, I don't know if you guys have been reading the articles about Trump's ghostwriter who wrote the article. Oh, yeah, I have. He's, no, he's starting to sell them out now. Yeah, he's, so, I mean, you know. I obviously don't know what happened in that situation, but like everything that he said about that rings for right. me. He just basically said that, like, you know, part of the deal, which is the book that Trump released in, uh, I guess it was like 88 or 89, is really like what made his reputation, like, which took him from just being like another developer in New York and turned him into like, you know, a national superstar. Yeah, a mogul. Super mogul. Right. And the guy was like, yo, this dude didn't write. A fucking word of the book. Like, Who gives a shit? Well, but Trump claims he did. That's the whole point. Trump's oh, like, okay, okay, okay. But what was it? The words in the book that made him a mogul, or was it the the 
the business acumen. Well, what this guy said is... It's like, said, you made his writing 10 times better. That's what he just said. Well, but the, no, the difference is this first. you and need I, his stories to no, make no, no, it 10 times there's, better. There's two differences. Charlemagne can write, first of all. Like, Charlemagne actually writes stuff. Most yeah. people who do these I books... Don't write a thing. Like yeah. I've worked with, like I Trump did the intro for Russell's first book, and they were like, "You need to work with him to get this intro together, and you know we need to get you on the phone with Trump, and you're going to interview him and find out what he wants to say in the intro and all this shit." So I like really, you know, it's Donald Trump. Like I really prepared and I had all these questions, and they put me on the phone. And, Wait, like, you I, did this me with personally, Trump? me personally. Damn, Chris. And they put me on the phone with him, and like you know, I started asking the questions, and after like 20 seconds, he was like, "Listen." This is what's going to happen. You write it, send it to me. I make it better. Goodbye. And like, hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's a president right there, boy. That's a president. So I just gave him some votes. So you what, yo, you, he did the same shit with Governor Kasich from uh, yeah, but here's the from thing. Ohio. I wrote it and I sent it to him. He didn't change a fucking word. Oh, so, okay, okay. Wait, you wrote a book for Trump? No. Well, I wrote. The I was, forward for Russell's. I book. wrote the forward for Russell's book, and then off of that, I got hired to write Ivanka's book. Ivanka's a beast. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm looking at all of these uh, rappers and all of these CEOs and hip hop who hung out with Donald Trump all of these years, <laughs> but now they talk oh. so bad about him. It lets right. me know that they're just poor judges of character, and that everybody's a groupie to somebody. They everybody just wanted to be around Trump because he was a billionaire. People wanted to say we know Trump. Trump saw a guy. That was the hottest photo to have in hip hop for a while. That's what I'm saying. You don't remember when they Trump. had him on a throne and it was like him and Diddy and they had him up in clubs yes. and like people were coming taking pictures with him. You remember Trump was at the Sauce Awards? <laughs> <laughs> was the Trump at the Sauce Awards when you hear that some award show that looked odd as fuck? Okay, probably all of them. But what does this say more about? What does this say more about their judgment of character? Is every one of those people wrong about their judgment of character or is Trump clearly lying? to get what he wants in this campaign. Me personally, I'm not voting for Trump, but I can see a liar when I see one. Or, or maybe not lying, or maybe people's positions that they get in cause them to switch up and change. It's just like when you give somebody some money. Like, you might be really cool with a person, and that might be your man, but he might get a million dollars and turn into a whole different Absolutely. beast. Absolutely. You're like, who the fuck is this person? Absolutely. So Trump right now could be drunk with power. Pete Davidson was on Uncommon Sense last week. Pete said the, Pete said the realest shit on the show. Pete said... In between breaks, Trump would leave, like walk out and be like, I, I can't believe it. I really might win this thing. Like, I could really be president. And I said, Pete, who was he talking to? He said he was talking to him fucking self. Hey, man, I don't know because I've never been in this position. But I know if that I had a possibility I could be the leader of the free world. Yeah. That shit going to change you in some way, shape or form, bro. Dude, Absolutely. It's like, I'll, I'll be honest, I was talking to Van about this the other day. It's like the, the slogan, make America great again, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that much thought went into the slogan. I don't think when they sat there in a the room, they're like, how do we tell, how do we make minorities feel like we want to bring them back to a time where they had way less civil rights and opportunities and make white people feel like we're going to bring them back to a time where there was much more uh, 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 economic uh, prowess in this country. And they're like, oh, make America great. I don't think at all. He was like, listen, what do I do? I make shit great. Okay, make America great. Put it out there. All of a sudden, white people were like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And I'm minorities like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it, it emboldened the fan base that he wanted. Yeah, I mean, a little more went into it, I think, only because it, it's not it's, it's even bigger than race. If you're a Republican, which Trump is running as, mm -hmm. and the Democrats have had a hold of the presidency for the past eight years, mm -hmm. you don't want another historic Democrat in the White House, which would be Hillary Clinton. So you're saying, let's make America great again by taking control of this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I think it's bigger than even just race. It's on some political shit. Exactly. Like, the Democrats have fucked shit up to yeah. them in their eyes, in the Republicans' eyes. So they want to take this shit back and make it great. And again. let's be very real. Anytime you say anything that's against a, a liberal Democrat, you become a racist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, or a mis misogynist. Like, it don't matter who you are. The second you say, I don't really, or I run against a Democrat, or you do anything anti the liberal party, you're immediately a racist homo. Nobody ever called Donald Trump well, a, well, a racist in 30 years before he ran against well, the Democrats. Trump, Trump helped a lot of that himself. Oh, 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 I, I absolutely believe he is running a hateful yeah. platform, and I, and I would never vote for this motherfucker to be president because, one, I'm just not desperate, and he runs a plan, he runs, he's out there for desperate people. But, um... 
But the reality of the matter is, is that, like you said, in hip-hop, motherfuckers mm-hmm. wanted pictures with this dude. This guy's coming to the Source Awards, all this yeah. kind of thing. He exhibited no, at least public, displays of, of of hate speech before he ran for president and all of a sudden had some people that wanted to hear some hate speech. We, we were psyched when we got him to write the forward for Russell's book. Like that, that was crazy? <laughs> that Isn't was that a look. crazy? That was a look. I mean, ask That's Russell. So ask Russell. We should even ask Russell. Yo, the guy that you knew he dis- before this. He disavowed this, him. He did a whole thing. But before yeah. that. Before that, the yeah. guy that you knew, was this man racist? See, the thing with Trump, in my limited experience with him, is like... You got this big piece of fuzz on the mic that's just bothering you. Yeah, shit. I know. Like, please take that. Like Even a, though the mic is made out of fuzz. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> fuzz on top of fuzz. <laughs> it's too much fuzz. He, I don't know, I mean, I don't think people thought he was racist, because for Trump, it's always just been about success. Like, he wants to be around success. And if you were... don't care if you're black, black he didn't give a sh- Look, I mean, you know, like, I had long talks with Ivanka where she's like, you know, my favorite artist is Bill Withers, because I really respected how, you know, he changed career... Because Bill Withers, like, walked, uh, worked in a, like, airline... You know, he worked for an airline, you know, as a mechanic until he's, like, 30. Like, he didn't start his career until his mid-30s. Did you write Ivanka's book? Ah, uh, yeah, and then something happened. Well, what the through. fuck would her book be about? That's why Being something happened halfway bitch. through. Listen, by hey, the way, I, I, that was hey. the one thing I hated about the Republican National Convention. I don't give a fuck about Donald Trump getting endorsements from his kids. You're supposed to get endorsements from your fucking kids. I don't give a shit about you being a good but you father. you see what they did? That was there for. I don't care. You, you're not convinced, but people like... They try to it's, humanize it's a, him. It's, yeah, it's, it's you humanizing humanize the fact. It's like, this shit a popularity contest. It's not merit. Clearly, Donald Trump's not being elected off of merit because he hasn't said a single fucking thing he's going to do to help the economy, to help foreign policy. He has no We're going to big, build a bigger army. Everything's big. We got it's the biggest big. army. It's big. We got a big plan, big plan, big plan. We're going to rebuild the army. Big plan. We got a bigger army than the next 26 countries combined. Listen, Donald There's no, you don't get bigger than our army. Donald Trump has been winging it and he's still winging it, but eventually the winging got to stop, God damn it. Hopefully. Okay? We're going to stop it. We got to stop it. We got to stop him. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. We got to stop it. I love the Democratic National Convention. I that think shit. the Democratic National Convention is just. What do you think of Clinton's speech last night? I love it. Mike, we're going to get into that. I love Let's it. stay on it, but that but listen, shit. Not even, listen, we got to start Ooh. on Monday. Cory Booker's speech was phenomenal. He sweats a lot. But that, but that's good. It's that two man things. Was it, 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 it's up two there, things. Bro. When you see a black man up there sweating, that means he preaching. Let me tell okay, you. Okay, that's why every pastor has that little rag and they wipe their forehead. <laughs> okay, Corey was up there preaching. Bro, that's you know why what? when when that sweat started to come, I was like, either he got to take a shit or them words that is coming out of his mouth are bro, coming from God. It might I be loved coming it. from God because, dude, you don't even need to tell countries that you're gonna blow them up. All you need to do is show that little red button with the nuclear codes and then beads of sweat that's, all over there you that go. shit. I'm, Corey I'm, thinking hey, about it. I'm, I'm, Corey. Hey, <laughs> Corey can run for president 2020, 2024. Yeah. Easily. That speech that he did Monday night reminded me very much of Barack Obama 2004 DNC convention. To people who didn't know Corey, like, who is that? And if you know him, you're like, you know what? Corey could be fucking president. Bro, one day. you know what it reminded me of the end of the speech was, was I have a dream. Let us declare, and I have a okay, dream. Now, okay, okay, first of all, come I didn't on, think, on, think I didn't think the speech was on, I didn't on. think the speech was that great. I'll be okay, honest with you, I didn't on. think it was that great. But he, it had the exact same rhythm as I have a dream. Let us declare, because Martin was hoof. Let us declare, because Martin was hoof. Let us declare. Every speech, every listen, even white people try to have that freaking cadence that Martin Luther King Jr. had, baby. <laughs> Martin Luther King had balls, baby. He had that rhythm. No, so everybody not. tries to have that rhythm. But Corey's speech was great. Michelle Obama was phenomenal. Right. Listen, this is how I gauge things in 2006. Michelle's phenomenal. When you watch things and you're like, damn, that was great. When things immediately become a meme, like, a, I mean, immediately people had Michelle Obama's face with when, 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 when people go low, you go high. Oh, yeah, and whatever yeah, this yeah, shit was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. And she got a fat ass, by the way. Michelle Dude, walked on the <laughs> camera cut right below that, but you saw the curvature? How you no, got curvature? Did you see when she walked out from the side? No, was it popping? I was on a plane because I was stuck on a fucking plane because I was coming from LA and it was bad weather in New York, so they had to reroute to Philly to get gas. We ended mm-hmm. up just being stuck in Philly. So I was on a plane, so I'm watching this whole shit. She walked out from the side, and I'm sitting there like, God damn. Michelle got yep. Michelle dragging a wagon. <laughs> like, <laughs> Michelle, like Michelle got a fat ass, bro. True, I'm like, man. I know this is the first lady and all, but Barack, I know. salute to you. She got it. And then she gave a phenomenal speech. Yeah. And then I thought Elizabeth Warren was great. I thought Bernie Sanders Elizabeth was great. Elizabeth Warren, I'm not gonna lie. Is a little goofy. Like, like Trump, Trump calling her goofy is quite accurate. Yeah, but like, she's 70 years old. There, it's still a little 60 something. 
Nah, 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 nah. Uh, Come on, man. If y'all tell me Elizabeth Warren in her 40s, I'm going to be like, white people got to stop. <laughs> white people got to stop tanning or something. White people, she's what the fuck? Indian, all right? Someone so, said, on, you know, someone said this. I forget who said it, but I want to give him credit. But uh, some comment was like, uh, Elizabeth Warren's hair looks like what Donald Trump thinks his hair looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta see how old a little bit more. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say she's 56. 53. I'm gonna say she's 56. She's 53. Her skin looks good. She's 67. I'm like, get the fuck out. Yes, man. I'm like, it's no way. Yes, she is. You're born in June, June 22nd, 1949, man. I'm like, come on. There's no way. Elizabeth got to be close to 70. She looks like it. I don't know. Elizabeth looks like, Elizabeth looks like your grandfather Elizabeth. old wallet. You know that wallet your grandfather yeah. had, that leather wallet, real leather yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. 30s? Yeah, the shit that got wet when yes. it was in his back pocket. That's what yeah. Elizabeth Warren looks like. But she gave a great speech. Bernie Sanders gave a great speech. The no, last Bernie night. gave a great speech, man. Bernie gave a great speech, man. Bernie gave a great speech. Corey gave a great speech. Michelle killed that shit. And I'm going um, to tell you Lena something. Dunham and America Ferrera were goofy as hell up there. I Good comic understand. relief, though. Oh, God, horrible. Good comic relief. Uh, horrible. I don't even movie. get it. It, it, it was just. It weird. made sense in the context of what they were talking about because of the things Donald Trump has said about women and have, what Donald Trump has said about Mexicans. Even though she's not a man, but that was a joke. And so I thought that was good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The dance, listen, the DNC has been fire so far. This is my thing. This, this is my whole observation for both conventions. I can't believe in just the first two days tonight. Well, we're recording this on Wednesday, so it comes out Thursday tonight. I think Barack Obama and Joe Biden speak. So you've already had Michelle Obama, Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders, Cory Booker, uh, Bill Clinton, who was phenomenal. Holy shit. Howard Dean, who was phenomenal. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh, you got Barack and Joe Biden tonight. You've always had, you've had these eight very experienced, Michelle Obama, nine, mm -hmm. whatever, experienced political seasoned veterans right. trying to convince you that they can run the country better than the fucking star of Celebrity Apprentice. That's and right. What the fuck is wrong with America, yo? So Scott Bale. Charles in charge, bro? <laughs> Charles was in charge. Can we think, I think that is a good point that we gotta make. Can we think what the fuck is wrong with America? Bill Clinton was one of the greatest presidents ever for eight years. Freaking bro. Michelle Obama's been first lady for eight years. Barack is the standing president. He speaks the night Joe Biden's vice president for eight years, sure. and we're listening to fucking Scott Bayo and Donald Trump like it's a contest. I mean, That's like it's literally like Kim Kardashian telling you I can play basketball better than LeBron James. Sure, like it's literally like that. Sure, and we're even feeding into this shit. Yeah, but if, but if your life sucked for the last eight years, you don't want to hear from those motherfuckers. Bur Donald Trump, you blame those motherfuckers. Trump ain't gonna make it no better, is bro. Here just, oh, Donald Trump is gonna be awful as a president. <laughs> <No>. Fucking <laughs> brutal. I would never vote for Trump, but you don't uh, don't underestimate uh, what desperation will make you do. That's desperation will make you believe some crazy shit. That is a Dr. fact. Dr. Umar Johnson, I know that might be your boy, but that dude, I am skeptical of. I really think that he might be a black Donald Trump. Nah. I really do believe this shit, and I'm I'm, I'm doing a little more research, but I think he might nah. be a snake oil salesman. Trump, I, Trump, I don't even know if nah. he's a real doctor. I'm um, going to keep that. I'm going to go that far. Umar, Umar is a very, he's, he's, he's a very knowledgeable brother, but just like anybody else, there's certain things he says that you question. Nobody has all the facts. I don't Everything care who he are. says, I question, practically. But that's because you don't know, but his constitutional knowledge is phenomenal. Good. He, he's memorized a document. That's great. Congrats. I have, neither have you. <laughs> well, I got Google, so congrats. It don't matter. I don't need I, to memorize, because I, I, I could just Google I, 13th Amendment and it, look that shit up. It don't up. matter. I'd rather have it off the top of the brain. I admire people like that, because that lets me know that they have done way more research than me and way more studying than me. That's it's something to be said about education versus experience. I like a combination of both, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm the type of individual who I have life experiences, but I'm not necessarily as educated as, say, a Killer Mike, a Dr. Umar Johnson, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, mm -hmm. any of those guys, because they actually do research. I don't care if you write, if you memorize the whole Bible, if you sin, just because you memorize some shit don't mean you can't be a fucked up person. Still, you're still educated. Just, so what? I'm, okay, so you memorize the fuck Bone Thugs and Harmony song that means you're the best rapper? It don't matter. That, that's, a, that's a terrible analogy because nobody's perfect. I keep telling you this over and over. Stop show. making the excuses logic, for the logic, fucking bullshit. The logic you use. You put bullshit out there. You know this applies to you this too, right? This guy puts bullshit you out there and you? you fucking know it. And I honestly, I honestly, am tr I'm literally watching YouTube videos of this guy because you put something on Instagram that was so fucking horse shit that this guy said. This I, I couldn't believe it. And I immediately texted you. I go, dude, what is up with this guy? This and what did weird. I text you back? I don't know. I text you. Exactly. That's your problem. And I keep telling you this. You probably you defended it with some I didn't defend it. I said, I don't, I don't believe the deportation thing. We actually, you know what I did after he said that? What's that? I researched it. 
Yeah. Because that's what you should do when you oh, don't yeah, believe yeah, that's something. Right, that's right, that's oh, right. Well, wind it back. There why why did he things. say that you had issues? Okay, there are two, there are two on, things that he said. Yeah, yeah, make sure you put it up. I mean, this was like... It, it literally went. By the way, Doctor Umar, eat you alive. Shit. I would. I, what did I say? Did I say you I want? want I want him to come on here. You know, you, I absolutely you're, want you're him like to come one on of here. White people who like, like abuse. I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. Bring listen, it on, baby. Listen, I listen, asked listen, you listen. to bring him on here. It's Doctor Umar. Listen, listen, listen. The loan. You can get a car loan, but you can't get a, a business loan. He's talking to black now. people. The education is going to cost me a hundred grand. The car is going to be about seventy grand. The house is going to be a quarter of a million. Why do you approve that, but you don't approve the business loan, which is probably for half the amount? Because if I finance your empowerment, that disrupts my system of extermination and genocide. You cannot kill a people who you are financially empowering. So we are kept without access to wealth. That's why the hood is full of mom and pop stores. That's why the hood is full of struggling businesses, because America has a policy where you do not empower black people for their own benefit. Any other minority? Yes. Why? Because if they get out of hand, they can be sent home. The black man cannot be sent home. Slavery is older than is older than America. America was born on July 4th, 1776. Slavery in the colonies began on August the 20th, 1619. You can get a student loan. What do you think, Chris? I disagree, well, no, I, I disagree with it a yet. lot, actually. It. I actually no, it have, a little, I have a little bit of experience can, with can that. I just, yeah. Can I just respond to one thing? and then Because I want, I want to show you. Okay. First of all, uh, you get, first of all, it just... I really get upset at these types of people because they just take advantage of people that aren't that aren't intelligent and they speak well and they take advantage of fear. They take advantage of anger. Right. There are black people that go through racism every single fucking day and they feel angry about it as they should. Right. And they feel they feel uh, just just wronged by society and they need and they need a rationale for those feelings. And this guy comes in and he comes in and he goes, oh, I got you. I'm going to make money off of your anger. I'm going to make money off of your fear. And I'm going to give you the perfect solution. I'm going to give you a nice big bad guy for you to believe in. That's the cause of all your problems. And I'm going to tell you some real sexy shit. And I'm going to bring out the DSM-4 psychology Bible and tell you why it justifies all my bullshit, bigoted ass opinions. So when it comes well, to this, when it comes to this loan shit, history. when it comes to this loan shit right here, when it comes to this loan shit you're talking about here, how is it that you could get a loan for a house, but you can't get a loan for a small business? Well, guess what doesn't go down in value as much as a small business? A house. If you have a house and you can't pay the bills, the bank can then take that house and sell it to somebody else. Can they take, the take nobody beats the whiz and sell nobody beats the whiz when that's out of business? Can they, they can take, take the property? Can they take, but you don't own the property when you have a small business. You own you the business. You technically don't own your house either. Yes, you absolutely do you own your you house. Don't. You own your house and if you don't pay the bills, the bank owns they it. But it, what yeah. does the bank do with nobody beats the whiz when they don't own the, the, the actual brick and they mortar that they're on? The they don't own the property. You yeah. understand the difference between a business and property? Because if not, we can't have this discussion. No, I don't, clearly. Okay, so business, right, is Charlemagne the God Enterprises. Oh, yeah, I know that. But Are you, are you but, sure? But if you have, a, if you own a business, like as far as like leasing a building, renting a building, which most people, that's what most people get the loans for, to get the building. Most of the time, you no, need uh, that's you need not startup true. money. That's not true. I grew up in a small business, and that's not well, true. Well, that's most of the time when I'm for me when I'm trying to start up a business. Startup I'm money is more building. than the two thousand dollars a month that you have to spend in rent. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I, I mean, think you're talking you, to someone who grew up in a small nah, business. I, mean, I understand these so laws. My father had a small a small a seafood market in Moscow, South Carolina. Okay, so let's let's ask him about what the cost was. But, for running but that I business. mean, I think he I think he's right about systematic economic oppression. But I think he's using a an incorrect example in my understanding because my father's actual an attorney and he took a class about minority small business loans. Mm -hmm. And when he came out of that class, he told me, he's like, yo, you need to let all your friends who are minorities, women know that there is actually money out there that the government has to give to people. Oh yeah, it's allocated. Like yeah, they, that's, they, that's what they do with farmers, you, especially now with the black farmers. It, they got to get, so to say that like they're trying not to give you that money is I think, as I understand it, inaccurate because they act the money's already allocated. So and the loans coming in at like oh 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 one percent yeah. interest. But like I think it's I, essentially I think free so money. But is, it thing? but is it banks or is it because usually it's small business not like banks literally that are in the cab this morning, I took a cab this morning and the guy who's African American who's in charge of small business loans in New York City, they have like those things running in the cab. They have offices. You can go I knew a guy who worked in the office. You can go and I can only talk about New York City, but like there is a small business minority loan office in New York City yes. where you can go and you can apply. And, you know, essentially, if you Not meet, only the, loans, if you meet grants, the criteria, Chris, 
Oh yeah, grants. my wife's a grant writer. I know. Free, yeah. So your wife's a grant. So yeah. free money that are that is specific. Grants are hard to get to. Doesn't though. matter. They are. They, are, they exist. They exist. So they're free money that you can get specifically if you're black or uh, other people of color can also get them, but they're more for black people specifically. So this is free money. This is small I mean, business grants, yeah. which you don't, don't have to pay you. back. This is you free. sound like Dr. Umar. No, okay, I mean you fair. can't. You can't just walk. <laughs> you can say that. Man. You can but say that. But that's the logic. But the difference is, the difference is, I can Google these but why grants. Why do you want people to believe you? you but not Dr. Umar. I can Google these grants. You can't Google the information to back up what Dr. Umar says. I did Google information. Well, I told shit, you. You did not. I, you already told me when I got on the phone with you. I don't disagree. You said I disagree with that one thing about sending back the the other minorities. Yes, and I said when it came to the small business loans, mm-hmm. yes, you can get grants, but I don't know about from the banks. You can when you get small. Business loans. These aren't banks that are giving you small business loans. That they is have, true. They that have, is true. They That's have true. companies. Look, you know how I know that? Because yes. I have businesses. But he's sure. insinuating the money's not out there, and I think I really think the money, it, like wax, should absolutely be able and to we get. Have. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Barack Obama it, yeah. allocated one point two billion dollars. Oh, right. to Barack black Obama, that, that guy who hasn't done anything for black people, according to Doctor Umar Johnson. That Barack Obama. Hey. Oh, what what, what about that one point two billion dollars? Oh, I guess he just forgot the about black that. Farmers. Or maybe it doesn't fit his fucking agenda, which is give you a justification, uh, uh, give you that heroin you need our, because our, you feel shitty. I'm going to give you a justification for your shitty feelings shows, and profit off your maybe ass. maybe he just didn't know. It's his job to know. Not really. We That's don't know. his fucking job. We don't know everything. So why don't you come in here with more facts then? Because I ain't Dr. You know what Andrew I tell shows every day? Read. Because this motherfucker will get up here and do exactly what now Dr. Just to dis- doing. Now you're just trying to discredit no, me. And say, no, 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 this is what you I'm do. Not, you try to no, discredit me. No, no, it's a very clever it's not strategic, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying it's to a credit strategic you. move. No, it's not no, 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 no. You try to discredit me okay. from, from talking about this person that you and I have already had a conversation about. He said specifically in this thing, what's the difference between giving people of uh, other minorities in America loans and giving black people loans? Is America doesn't want to profit the black man's rise in economic power. Um not profit. They won't want to support it. They will do it for people, other minorities, because they could send those other minorities back to their country. How? Listen. How could you do that? I don't agree with you that You can't either. send but, but, a Chinese but, kid that was born here back to China? I, I don't agree with that, but you know the reason It's I, not even about agree you, or not. It's wrong. I, I don't. I, I think it's wrong, but you know the reason I didn't dispute that is because I didn't know. Simple as that. How could you not know? This is Mr. Constitution. It doesn't matter. He doesn't know the fact that know. if you're born here, you can't get sent back to China. Hey, China's I'm, gonna look at him listen, and go, "We don't want the that American." The, the, it's two things I want to make a point about. The difference between me and you is, Just, I'm, why I'm why not talking about this issue. Because now we talking about us. Let's talk no, about no, no, this listen. issue. The difference between me and you is, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. And if I don't know, you know what I do? I shut the fuck up and listen. Sure. And then I go research. So the next time I'm more prepared. That's number one. Number two, mm-hmm. the reason I tell you. To, it's okay to say, yo, you don't agree, agree mm-hmm. with Dr. Umar, but to say things like he gets up and he just runs his mouth and he wants people to believe in him, that's what we all do. Yeah, I didn't say any of those things. That's I, what I, you just no, said. I no, I didn't. I said he preys off people's anger and he and profits off that. And you said you want that. people to believe in him and you said- No, that I he, never said I want people to believe him. You said he wants people about. to believe in him. Of course he wants them so you he can profit that. off of them. Yes. Okay. I, I honestly, so what are we doing every day? What do you mean, what are we doing every what day? What are we doing every day? This is what we do, Sean. We're giving our opinions. This is what we do. The actually, same exact thing. Actually, we do other things. But this is what we do. This is not the primary same income. Thing this Dr. is not primary income listen, for us. The same thing Dr. Umar does. People listen to this podcast. People listen to the radio. Mm-hmm. People hear your stand-up. They watch us on social media, and mm-hmm. they think the same exact thing. I'm never going to discredit anyone for having free speech, mm-hmm. for saying what they feel. Oh, actually, actually, I disagree completely because what we do every week on this is talk about people who have free speech and are using it to possibly manipulate people to do the wrong way. The exact what's same, your the exact thing, same say, thing, the exact same thing that we do to Donald to Trump when we're doing it to Donald Trump and we say Donald Trump is using his free speech to fucking hurt people and promote hate. All of a sudden, I'm a good guy for saying that, no. right? Everybody supports that. When I, when we're, no, we yes, say, we, we say Donald are. has when the we, right to say when it. we shit on people who say all lives matter on this very podcast, all of a sudden we're good for saying that we're pointing out the inequalities in the world but when we shit on Dr. Umar Johnson it's whoa 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 we do this every no, week I we go listen. out here and express our ideas Shows. why don't you just let people express their this, ideas this is why I keep telling you your opinion will never hold no weight until you are more committed to your own opinion what, what am I not committed to you get to? on this podcast and say verbatim even if I don't agree with you I will fight for your right to say it you say that that's you verbatim who said when did I say he can't say it <laughs> Oh my God, man. You have to understand the difference between disagreeing 
which is something I believe That's vehemently. What I just in. told you. No, wait, I said no, you no. should be able to disagree with somebody, but don't when, discredit when, them. When, of course, you discredit the people you disagree How? with. Absolutely. You, if you believe you, somebody is promoting something you just, you that just, will hurt people, you, you discredit their point. You discredit a point or two, yeah, but don't discredit absolutely. their whole narrative because you don't know. What if you What if you don't believe so in their whole narrative? You I've discredited you, Trump's you whole watch, narrative. You, you the, have no problem with that, but you're defending Umar. Let me ask you a question. Did you watch the whole hour Dr. Umar interview? I I didn't watch the whole hour, but I watched exactly. many. So how are you coming to this whole conclusion? Based off a 50 second clip. No, I didn't watch only a 50 second clip. That's your watch? assumption. I watched you watch? several videos on YouTube about him. What else did you watch? I watched a video with him uh, confronting a, uh, a gay lesbian uh, activist. He hates gay people. I don't agree with him on that either. Well, I'm glad you're supporting him and putting him on your Instagram. Um, I support, I, listen, I support anybody. I give, I'll interview Donald Trump. That's what I keep trying to tell you. No, I don't. The difference I between don't dis- interviewing somebody and promoting their rhetoric, and you promote this guy's no, rhetoric. No, I was. I was. I'll I was, be honest, I was I promoting think... a Breakfast Club interview because right after that, I put the ASAP Rocky interview out. Literally seconds later, yeah, I was you, promoting all the new interviews you dis- we had up on our website. Shows. You have. You have. You have. Uh, I don't want to say bragged, but you have. Uh, you have said. When we had the interview with uh, with Joe last week, he was like, I'm the guy that's putting Dr. Umar Johnson on the breakfast yes. club. Nobody's giving him a platform. I'm giving him a platform. And so you Mr. are proudly, and Gregory. proudly giving this yeah. guy, this homophobic dude, a platform. You want to put, put it in context or you just want to try to prove your point? The that's reason what I, you the re- said. The reason I told Joe that because Joe's rhetoric was Charlemagne is a puppet. If Charlemagne was a puppet, why would I take people like that, politically incorrect people, and put them on the radio? People who say things like the white man is the devil or they don't agree with uh, 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 being gay or anything. Why would I put them on the air if I was a puppet? Mm -hmm. Same way I would take a gay man and let him get on there. I could put D-Ray on it. This is the thing about people in general. Anybody Mm -hmm. with a real opinion or anybody who says things that people don't agree with, people are going to disagree. I could take a nice, sweet gay man like Mm D-Ray. Put him on the radio. Mm -hmm. D-Ray can talk about Black Lives Matter Mm -hmm. and why we should be protesting. And somebody will be like... Why you got that gay dude on the radio? Sure. He pushing the gay agenda. And and and, and he ain't really the, the 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 leader of the Black Lives Matter movement. Everybody's gonna have something to say about somebody. So here's the I'll difference. take a, I'll let a, if listen, I would love to interview a real white supremacist. I would love You're talking about to your interest in interviewing somebody. I'm talking about supporting no. rhetoric. And these That's are two supporting different rhetoric things. Shows. For me, so you're telling me this when, is when Donahue would have the Farrakhan, Donahue, Phil Donahue would go from having Farrakhan on to the grand no, winner no, no, of the Ku Klux Klan. No, no. Is he supporting their rhetoric? No, no, no. You're, you're talking about, we're talking about two very different things. How? We're talking about two very different things. Do you not support some of what Dr. Omar Johnson says? Absolutely. Okay, so that so let's not get away from that. It's not like, I'm just interviewing this interesting guy. I'm, don't fall behind the... I'm the radio guy thing where I interview interesting I'm people. I'm you t- support I some you. of the shit this guy says. So what? Some. Exactly. Word, and so what? Exactly. So, so you know that you know you can do that in life, right? You know in life absolutely, you can be objective. Charlamagne. You know in absolutely. life, you know in life you can totally absolutely. disagree with one person's yes. point, but then agree with another yes. point, right? But you know what I okay. you know what I Let's like to do? That. What this is the difference between you and I. One of the things that I like to do is when I support someone, they have to have sound logic. You go and he support does have someone. Sound logic in just certain be, situations. Show me the sound logic in that clip that you promoted on Instagram. Once again, once again, show me the sound once logic. Again, one fifty second clip. I specifically said. So why don't he you choose another fifty second in certain situations? Why don't you choose another fifty second clip to because promote that you agree with? That's the clip that the Breakfast Club fucking cut out and sent and blasted out. So I reposted on my motherfucking Instagram page to promote See, that's the a interview. That's if, a you want, if you want more, you go watch the interview. And let me, let me ask you this question. I wouldn't do that. Oh, tell me, tell me, let me ask you this question. I would worry that it would affect people's mentality. Well, that's and why I would worry that it could possibly change the way they think. And I would take responsibility of myself as an influencer and I wouldn't want to promote those values and put those values out there so that there's some young kid that's walking around the hood and thinking there was you no know values what? you know oh there weren't values no, that was a, that was a, you know what well, that was you, you, know, on you that. know what that was that you was a minute that, that was a one minute clip with this guy speaking about something that made you go crazy so you know what you know what most smart people would do that aren't Andrew they'll mm-hmm. look at that clip and be like what the fuck let me go to this interview and see what the fuck he's talking about because you know why at the end of the day I'm still promoting my motherfucking radio show and you should as and that's should. what that that's why that's why that clip was the greatest clip to put out. Cause that clip made you get on this motherfucking podcast and have a platform, which I'm sure it made other people do. Mm-hmm. And it makes people go back to the interview and watch the interview and get it in full. I had a conversation about it. I spoke to Van about it for a while. I, Van shares my sentiments on Dr. Umar Johnson. So, and uh No, and he doesn't. Not actually, fully. Not, I've, t- I've talked to him about it. What was that last thing you said? Not, not fully. fully. Not fully. But that's what every show. How many times do I have to tell you? It's there's, there's all nobody, of a sudden there's we see nobody, some leaks. In the boat, How? some water's entering the boat, guys. I, I, I could, I could have sworn from the jump. I said I don't agree with everything Doctor Umar says. I, t- 
tell Dr. Umar I don't agree with everything. You don't have to, like we've already said on this show, you are completely entitled to your opinion. If I find your opinion to lack logic, if I see that it lacks logic and it lacks facts to back it up, I will yes. go after your opinion and I will discredit the opinion it. You saw it is in your job. Clip. It is your job, not you personally, but it's your job as Dr. Omar Johnson, as Donald Trump, as Barack Obama, mm-hmm. as anybody to present ideas and have things to back them up. It's our job on this podcast to do the best of our ability to have ideas that back our but, shit up. But, but, now, but if you but don't, come to people a, can you, discredit us. But that is com- totally okay. But you're what did we do a, yesterday, you're, you're last week, with Joe Button on the podcast? He's making these assumptions about you. And before I, I even want you to defend yourself, I go, back up what you just said. And if you can't back up what you just said about my friend Charlemagne, I'm not even going to dignify your but shit the, with a this response. Is the pro- this is the problem. I keep telling you this over and over, Schultz. You come to full conclusions based off limited information and research on what you're coming to conclusions on. You watched a 50 second clip and probably knowing you with your ADD, probably a minute of each Dr. Umar video and fucking like, you know, this guy's a quack. He's a fucking quack. You have not took in enough of his information. That's how bad he is. See, see, in see in one minute, I see can see saying? that this guy's full of shit. You see what I'm saying? But I, honestly, <laughs> and this is this is where I'm going to take the leap. But I honestly, in my heart, I really, first of all, I'm not the only one that thinks this. If you just type in Dr. Umar Johnson, like the third and fourth thing are all exposed. So clearly I'm not. Type you know, Dr. You know, Umar you know, Johnson into you YouTube. Know why? And you know why? Why is that? Because he fucked a prostitute. So what? I don't but, care. Exactly. I but saw talk, that. But talk about you don't care. I don't care that but, you do but, that. But when you're a guy like him. And it wasn't a prostitute. Like, it was a stripper. A stripper. Yeah. But when you're a guy like him. Yeah. Who gets out there and you put your chest out and you're, you're, you're so positive. Sure, you're trying to be uplifting and empowering yeah. righteous. Yeah. As soon as you do a little dirt, they on your ass. But that's not dirt the to me. The first time. He, to you. Yeah, because I care about logic and facts. I don't care about some stripper pussy. Exactly. But the first time he came to the breakfast club, I bought up the stripper shit. He was like, I'm a man. I got some pussy. I fucked with a, chick, a crazy chick. I fucked in whatever happened. I, I don't know. I mean, he didn't call it back, whatever it was. But that's the kind of logic. Now he was that, thirsty for it. I, it don't matter, but that's the kind of logic they will use Very to tear somebody totally down. They did it with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Listen, the I same, don't care Dr. if Martin you Luther, have sex with women. And neither did Coretta. And you know what? Coretta was a G for that. That's the difference between, I mean, that's look, the difference between Martin and Malcolm. I love Malcolm to death. Yeah. And I'm just thinking of this top of the mind because I was just watching X the other day. Yeah. But w- soon as freaking Betty Shabazz found out Elijah Muhammad, had some other chicks out there and was getting some other chicks pregnant, that ruined the nation. If I was Malcolm, I would approach that totally different. Yeah, yeah. That's when the student, when it became the teacher, and I'd have been like, Elijah, you wrong. Mm-hmm. You know all these people believe in you. Mm-hmm. They believe in us. You got to take care of these kids. Let's keep it going. Like how Coretta did when, Coretta, when, hey. when, the, when the FBI and CIA came sure. to Coretta, Coretta said, File sealed. This movement ain't bigger than my marriage. Boom. I mean, see, see, what she said, this movement is bigger than my marriage. Yep. Sometimes you got to move like that. That's how I would think with a Dr. Umar with some scripture shit. I but agree. I feel like what Dr. Umar is actually trying to do is great. This guy's trying to empower people. Mm-hmm. He's trying to uplift the, uh, and oppress people. Mm-hmm. This guy's been trying to build the school for the longest, which I told with that rhetoric, I totally believe in. He's been telling these celebrities. You want to build a school where they say that homosexuality is wrong, where black men shouldn't be able to have sex with women uh, that who aren't black? Gonna, who said that's what he's going to be teaching in the school show? Oh, so he's going to not teach the that's shit like he saying, teaches oh, regularly? Diddy just built a, what Diddy is got, wrong with you? On, Diddy, what is wrong with Diddy you? Diddy just built a charter school and in Harlem. the X-Men school that treats the X-Men Diddy, shit. Diddy just built a charter school in Harlem. Is he going to be serving the kids a rocket lunch? No, because they're not 21. What, the what kind of dumbass logic is no, that? What kind of dumbass logic oh are you saying? God. This guy, this guy wants what, a school What, that the built. person would continue his teachings in his school that is for teaching? You think he's yeah, gonna, that is a crazy you think, step. You think to, he's gonna, you that think, is a leap you think, of faith You think right Dr. There. Umar is going to be the only teacher in the school? I think Dr. Umar is going to decide what is taught in the school. And I think Dr. Umar, since he is allegedly an academic and has taught for, as he says, over 20 years, I think he would continue his teachings, which has have given him success, that are partially based on homophobia, or he doesn't consider homophobia because he's not afraid of gays, but uh, bigoted views towards homosexuals. He thinks that they're mentally ill. Um, because it was written in DSM-3 20 fucking years ago. And uh, he also uh, doesn't believe that black men should be able to date women of other color for the stupidest reason I've that. ever heard. I don't agree in with my that time, This is his logic for why they shouldn't do it. This is, And people actually listen to this shit. That, it just shows me that people are fucking hurt. His logic is women live longer than men. So if a black man dates a, let's say, Asian woman, right, and they have uh, children. When the black man dies, because women live lo- longer, 
that wealth is transferred to the Asian woman, and therefore that wealth is going to be is going to stay in the Asian community and not the black community, as if it's impossible to use your wealth to help your people while you're alive. As if that concept is completely I, I, out of I, the I, fucking I, blue. I, I Furthermore, I, I what about your I, children? I understand what he's trying to say. Which is what? He's basically saying that he wants black people to stay with black people. So if black people do have money, it guarantees that it could stay in the black community, which isn't necessarily true. But he's trying. That's what he's trying to say. He's basically saying if I'm married, if I'm a black man and I'm married to an Asian woman, if we don't have kids or whatever and I die, then the Asian wife gets the money. The Asian wife is going to go back to her heritage and her culture. Yeah, because she hates saying. black people so much that no, she married. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is she's marrying a black guy. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> but it's that's so, all he's saying. But here's the problem. It's like, that doesn't make sense. But I won't say no that. fucking no. sense. No. Nothing you know that what else, you know what else don't make sense. sense? You know what else don't make sense? I'm a white man. I don't want my white daughter marrying a nigger because niggers are just niggers. Because niggers are black. I don't like niggers. Yeah. That's, that's the, it's the same type of logic. It's all stupid. Hey, get, yeah. wait a minute. So you agree that his logic is stupid? I just said that. What, 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 so what conversation you, are we having? Why are you disagreeing right now to agree? You're not listening. Oh, Shosh, no, we all Shosh listening Shosh right now. Listens. We all listening right now because what? you said I get I'm, I'm what he say, says. I'm, I'm going to say, say this one more time. Man, well, like please, I should write it down. Please write it down. Text me it. So I, I, what, don't let you, me really what, sit there. What, just, what don't, next time you agree with me, just go, you, you right. Listen, hush for a second. And then I get what it. What don't you understand about some things I agree with from a person and some things I don't. What don't you understand about the things that I don't he agree with? Listen. He, don't even listen. He didn't even let that register. You know, I've said that about seven, eight times. Some things I agree with, some things I don't. I just heard it. From yes. people. Very good. We, we said it five times on this podcast. Aren't you? I, I would hope that you're that type of objective person. Of course I am. And I you would know pray I am that, that kind are. of objective person. There's people whose, whose rhetoric I don't want to accept because it hurts me to accept, but has logic and has facts that back it. And because I care so much about consistency, I go, you know what? This has a point. Okay? That's why, that's, that's, Dr. That's Umar why Johnson I like Dr. Umar. is the opposite of that. No, Dr. Umar Johnson consistent. says the things that you want to hear because you've dealt through fucked up racism. So true. you want an excuse for this shit. So you hear it. And you go, I want to believe this. I, don't like, I want to believe this so bad, I'm not even going to fact check listen, it. I'm well, not even going to look to see. Well, that's the difference between me and everybody else. And this is what I encourage anybody to do. I don't care how much you believe in somebody. Mm -hmm. You should always fact check. Period. I don't give a fuck if it's me. I don't give a fuck if it's Andrew Schultz. I don't give a fuck if it's Dr. Umar. I don't care who it is. Well, I fact check. That's why I disagree no, with Umar. No, you don't. You don't even that's read. That's why I do. That's why I agree with you. You know, so I tell Schultz every day. Schultz, Schultz, I read Schultz, all Schultz the will time. Schultz that's will all text I me stuff. Do. And I'll be like, I'll be like, Schultz didn't read this. I'm like, I know for a fact he didn't see it. I know he did. And then I'll be like, Schultz, did you see it? Well, no, not the whole thing, but I'm just saying. Like, you got to what you stop mean? doing that. What you mean? That. When I do that? Everything. Dr. Uma, we just, you just admitted. you, Dr. Uma. No. No, I didn't admit anything. I'm gonna do a mid roll. Show me facts. This episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you facts. by This episode of Brilliant Idiots <laughs> is brought to you by Squarespace. A good website isn't hard to come by when you build it with Squarespace. Squarespace provides simple, intuitive tools that allow you to build the website of your dreams with ease. Build it beautiful using Squarespace's award winning templates, customizable settings, and more, all without a single plugin. Salute to A Look is Brady on Twitter, who said Squarespace has the best layouts. If it wasn't for Brilliant Idiots, I would have never known. Now I'm going to bet that this young man had no idea how to build a website, but Squarespace is just that easy. And for all those of you with merchandise or products to shill, Squarespace Commerce provides all the tools you'll need to track inventory process orders and understand every aspect of your business. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter the offer code IDIOT to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, set your website apart. All right, hold on, hold on one second. We got one more sponsor we got to talk about, and then we need to get back to it. Uh, we're going to take a break and say thank you to this week's sponsor, Touch of Modern, for sponsoring this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots. Touch of Modern connects you with timeless and unique products for the best prices available, guaranteed. With loads of new sales literally launching literally every day, touchofmodern.com is the one website to discover and improve your lifestyle in a single click. Touch of Modern really does have the latest and greatest products collected for you in a single place that's going to give you that Touch of Modern. Okay, like the point camera free home monitor. Okay, a camera free security system that keeps you connected to your home by identifying events and analyzing sound and environmental data. Okay, it allows you to watch my voice is cracked. What just happened right there? I turned into a 14 year old. It allows you to watch over your home without intrusive cameras and with just one single sensor or the effortless charging bags by one voice. These bags are beautifully designed tech wearables that keep your devices 
charged, okay? Tech gadgets, phone accessories, vintage watches, men's fashion, and more. All of these products and more are available right now at touchofmodern.com. Now, our listeners can get immediate access to these deals when they sign up at touchofmodern.com. That's touchofmodern.com. Do it today because tomorrow it will be different. That's how life rolls in a fast lane. I'm going to tell you why this is a good discussion. This is a good discussion because we are, we're in a political season. And you know how they're saying uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is the lesser of two evils, Mm -hmm. basically what they're saying. And I feel like when you're dealing with people, you listen to people's conversations, you know, whether it's you see them in an interview, whether you hear them give a speech. I think you should you listen to people a few times and you come to uh, an agreement with yourself on whether or not you can or cannot support this person Mm -hmm. and whatever their agenda is. In the case of somebody like Dr. Umar, Dr. Umar has been trying to get people to uh, contribute money to a school for the longest. His rhetoric is probably one of the reasons people don't want to contribute money to the school. There they, we may, go. they may agree with him, but they may not agree with him enough to say, you know what? I'm going to give him money. I don't want him teaching that stuff I'm gonna to America. Mo- I'm going to give him money for this school. Like, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I love the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I think that he has great rhetoric. I don't agree with all his rhetoric at mm-hmm. times, but it's the same thing with him. Sometimes your opinions can be so divisive mm-hmm. and can draw so many lines that people just don't want to support whatever your agenda is wholeheartedly or stand by whatever your agenda is wholeheartedly. Yeah. Some people, when I look at Dr. Umar, I, I, I support Dr. Umar because I know what he's trying to do overall. Which is? Empower black people. Okay. That's it. Empower black people. What about gay black people? He clearly don't like gays. So, so he's not trying to empower black people in that way. <laughs> he what about, he's uh, not here. He's, uh, he's, some black people. What I'm about thinking... uh, Derek Jeter's dad? What's Derek Jeter's What dad? about Jesse Williams' dad? Does he, is he mean? trying to empower them? Well, they're fucking white ladies, so I don't know if he's trying to empower them. What about all the black people in America that have uh, are in mixed relationships? Is he trying to empower them? Probably not. So he's only really trying to empower the black people who agree with him. He's not trying to empower black people. He's trying to empower... No, himself I think, I think, and his own no, ideology. I think he's trying to... Look at what he's doing no, no, specifically. I think he's trying if to... if he cared about black people in general, then everybody would fall under that. Well, I think I think he's trying to empower the black people he agrees with. And that's the problem with most people in America. That's why we have a problem with Donald Trump. Because when Donald Trump says he wants to make America great again, we don't feel like that includes all of America. We feel like he's talking to a specific group. Because he is talking yeah, to a specific just group. Like, just like and how, we call just, him out on that shit, don't yeah, we? Absolutely. So let's call out Dr. Umar. Who says we're not? All I'm, I'm trying to. You disagree with me. No, all I'm all I specifically said to you, Schultz, was the rhetoric you use to discredit someone can totally be applied to us, because you should not just say because you don't agree with a person's point or even a person's point or two. Fuck that individual and fuck everything that comes out of his mouth. Because guess what? I never when said you, that. When you say something, you did. I never but said so many fuck words. Doctor Umar. No, I never did. said that. No, of course you didn't. But when you say because when you do say something ever so often, that's brilliant. It'll go over people's heads because they're so used to the other you made a great point. five things that they don't agree with. You said that I don't think in that's the text. fair to people. You made a great point in the text, which is what worries me about this uh, Instagram video that you put up about Dr. Umar is he says one thing in there that could uh, that is blatantly wrong that could discredit all the blatantly right things that he said. And I completely and agree with you. And that's what media does. Media uses sound bites nowadays to totally discredit people. Now, here's the thing. I haven't, I haven't heard every single point that Dr. Umar Johnson has made. I think that he's made a bunch of things about the uh, prison, the prison industrial complex. Uh, is a prison industrial complex uh, that um, that I have to look further into, and I might completely agree with him on some of that stuff. He's right with that with the amendment. I, I read that I, years ago. I might completely agree. With and him. I forgot what amendment it is. What is it? Thirteenth, maybe. Thirteenth. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think it's thirteenth. But thirteenth or fourteenth. Yeah. That, that was that was in the amendment that if you're a slave and they free you, if you commit a crime, you go back into slavery. Mm-hmm. Which is basically what the prison industrial complex is. That is fast in the that's in the I, I, that's, in, that's gonna, in there. I, I can't give an opinion on it just yet because I'd have to research more just to see how sound it is. But I, I, I yes, I agree with the amendment, mm-hmm. but um or or that that's fact. But I just have to see how it relates to the to the prison industrial complex. But um clearly there's some fucked up shit with our prison system, and clearly it affects minorities in a greater way than it affects anybody Absolutely. else, especially black people. So the fact that prisons are on the at. stock market lets you know what it is. Absolutely. The privatization business, of prisons. Baby. Exactly. It's just like police quotas. It's like, we. Absolutely. why are we filling quotas? Why are we filling beds in a prison? The idea should be getting people out of the prison. Absolutely. But when you run something for profit, you want to have as many people in there, and that's why they change the uh, the, the sentencing, they change the, 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 length of, the length of sentencing per crime, It's supposed to be a correction of 
facility. They ain't trying to correct shit. They're not trying to rehab anything. They have the fuck. They don't want no, no cure. They want treatment. Keep it full. There's it's money in like and out. Chris Rock said back in the day. The money's in the treatment. At, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The money right. is not in the kill. We want to keep treating these motherfuckers to break the law. That's it. Exactly. No, I'm with you on that completely. I think that we need complete reform. So I'm sure that he's going to have some points about that that I probably do agree with. So mm-hmm. I can't discredit everything this man says. And that's I can only discredit everything I've heard so far. <laughs> <This guy. laughs> Every single thing that he, that I've heard him talk about so far. But you know what, though? No, 100% of listen, it is not, complete and utter nonsensical that's not, that's, bullshit. That's not even a bad point because if I am a Jay-Z fan, and I, I I tell you to listen to, I, I reference uh, King ah, Kingdom Come. Sure. So I give you I give you Hollywood. I give you uh, the song with Usher and Pharrell, the stripper song. I pick five. I pick Jay Z's five lamest records ever, mm-hmm. and say this is why Jay Z's the best. You're like, get the fuck out of here with this True. bullshit, man. This guy's trash, mm-hmm. and I can't be mad at you because this is what I presented. That's what you. You initially saw some points from Dr. Umar that you don't agree with. If it's about gay stuff, you're not going to agree with it because mm-hmm. I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. But he's broader and deeper than you're giving him credit for. But can you compartmentalize? I didn't say that he's not. I'm not I'm not saying he's not broader and deeper. All I'm saying is all the issues that I've heard him talk about so far, I disagree with and I think aren't logical or aren't and factually that's fine, backed up. But just like we can't, I can't discredit the totality. No, but that's what I'm Dr. asking. For can you compartmentalize? compartmentalize excuse me quote unquote gay stuff like I'm, I'm not what like i mean that. is like, like all right so like let's say he was making a lot of sense about let's say he was a white uh scholar in his situation making a lot of sense about economic empowerment for poor people but he had very very racist views could you put that in a box and separate that from everything else he's saying or absolutely does it, you could and you should as a human being that's what life is about you take do what you, you do that for donald trump Yes. You do? Absolutely. Oh, they they asked me on Uncommon Sense, what's the one thing about Donald Trump that you like? And I like the fact he's honest. That's it. I can't give you nothing else. No, no, that's the one thing that you like about him. I don't think it's possible. Oh, he hasn't made a point that I agree with. Yeah, no, I'm no, sorry about that. I, just, no, no, I, no, no, no. I feel about Donald Trump the way you feel about Dr. Uma. I have not heard Donald Trump say one thing yeah. that I agree with as Neither far as policy, anything. Neither like nothing. Like Absolutely. zero, zilch, nada. I so, haven't. So, and and because you haven't heard anything, you probably have this idea about him as a, a presidential candidate, where you're like he's unfit. That's how I feel about Trump. It's, no, I feel you like don't think Trump I, is unfit to be president. Yeah, you know why I feel like he's unfit to be president because he has zero experience. Like how, zero. How, let's say like, he had all the experience, but he still had his views and his platform. I don't. He wouldn't have those views if he had all hypothetical. The We're playing a hypothetical. I can't. Like that's a terrible hypothetical. My because point if he had is, experience, he wouldn't have those views. Okay, fair. I agree with you Because you know that. why? Because he would not have gotten in that position with those motherfucking absolutely, views. There's absolutely. No, you're not going to spend 30, 40 years in the motherfucking White House not being a politician. Absolutely. you got to play the politics of the game. Like, absolutely. That's why I hate when people use the term politically correct when it comes to us regular everyday folks. It's like, well, who's a politician? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I hate when people be like, well, you know... You, you got to be politically correct. Well, what politics am I applying to? Yeah, I'm a senator. Yeah, what what politics? Am I Democrat? Am I Republican? What do you mean polit- politically correct for what and who? So it's like for him, he's not a politician, and it has gotten him this far. But no, I just he he would never have 30 years in the White House being who he is. I right will now. I will say this about the political correctness that that Trump has brought up. Um, I do think that political correctness is dangerous in terms of change, because when you're afraid to say. Not necessarily how you feel, but say something that is supported by facts because you're worried about the shame that comes along with it. Mm-hmm. You don't bring up these ideas and then we continue to live this lie so that everybody's comfortable. So yeah. I think that political correctness in a way hinders progress. It holds us in this moment where we're all lying to each but other. See, I think you're just using the word political correctness when you can just throw that word out and just say... Motherfuckers just need to tell the truth. Well, like that's it. Like stop shooting the Why shit. don't they tell the truth? Because I don't know. I, no, because they, they think they're supposed to be politically yeah, correct. Yeah, they think they that's think, what they, I'm think they think we want the lie. But they pe- think people do want the lie. There are people that do want the yeah, lie. Yeah, I've been having this. Co- we've been having this conversation the past couple of weeks when it comes to the, comes to the internet, man. Because I feel like it's a lot of things we're not supposed to be seeing, bro. Dude, I we, feel like the, I feel like it's like the Wizard of Oz, and we found out that it's a little motherfucker back there, mm-hmm. fucking using this goddamn smoke machine. Yeah. Like it's a lot of things we're not supposed to see. I do not feel like we're supposed to see as much police brutality as we see. Yo. 
Absolutely. I don't not. want to know all of this shit is going on. You know what? I do want to know, but I don't want to know if that makes any sense. It's I like guess. when it's like when NWA was singing "Fuck the Police" and everybody was talking about police brutality in LA and nobody believed it, and then you saw the Rodney King video, you're like, "Holy shit!" And it's like, I remember six years ago we was here on Combat Jack. You couldn't get me to believe that America was still as racist as as I have learned to realize in the past six years it is. I, I got on here and I said they are planting seeds of racism yeah. in a generation of kids that weren't even thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. And I stand by that. Yeah. But I did not understand the levels of racism that was still going on in motherfucking America. You know why? Because I don't live like that in yeah. my everyday life. Yeah. The people that I'm around, we don't move like that. I got white friends. I got black friends. I got sure. gay friends. I got Asian friends, Jewish friends. Like, we don't, it don't matter. Like, I, my world was just different and has been different for years. Yeah. And always has been. So, to see all of this shit that's going on and even to read like some of the racist comments you see on social media to see how police is still treating black men and black women out here it's it's unfucking believable you like know, we're not supposed yeah. to be seeing all this. You, you know what? I agree with you. And we we've been talking about this this week. Uh, I don't think our brains are ready for the internet. I mm -hmm. think that um, we literally haven't evolved. Our brains haven't evolved to to handle what the internet brings us. Because what the internet does is it brings you all the tragic shit that happens in the world in one day. One day. At one time. At one time. So you start thinking all this tragic shit that's happening in the world is happening in in, in and around your life. Mm. You don't conceptualize how many people are in the world for this thing to happen mm. to. So there's a bombing in this country over here. Uh, a black guy gets shot by the police over here. Mm. A woman gets raped over here. And Donald Trump says he's going to build the wall to keep all Muslims out. Keep all, which <laughs> we don't even know how they're going to get in with a wall. But regardless, Mexicans. But it is Mexicans, what it is. Uh, but so all these things happen, right? Right? And our brain literally can't can't fathom, oh, well, there's six billion people in the world. So the chances of me getting shot by a cop, uh, even though I'm black, is very, very, very you're, low. You're not leaving the, you're not leaving your brain a chance to develop the power of positive thinking. But, but real you're, quick, you're, before positive thinking, what I'm talking about is you're not giving your brain a chance to process the 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 percentage chance of these things happening, right? You're not right. giving your chance. You're not giving your brain a chance to process any good. Look, look, look. Here's the thing. When you like, when for example, uh, w maybe 400 people a year gets shot by a cop or killed by cops, right? And let's say I think it's something like 32 percent of them are are black men or something like that, right? So whatever that uh, statistic is, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe 150 or something like that. I'm not. I'm not sure it is. So something like 150. 150 out of 330 million people in America get killed by a cop. Right. Way more people get killed in car accidents than that per year. The fact that you walk around every day worried that you could get killed by a cop is irrational thinking if you want to go off of percentages. But our brain cannot process that. Like you don't have a fear of getting into a car. You get in a car every single day. Shit, you don't have me. a fear. You know what I'm saying? Eating McDonald's. <laughs> shit, you don't have fear of eating McDonald's. You know, shit, me. No, no you, do, you, I, do, you do. I got to feel all that you, shit you but, just But named. you know what I'm saying? I'm my, a hypochondriac. I'll be the guy that got my seatbelt on, sure. telling Wax to slow the fuck down. Sure, sure, if sure. I'm in the car with an Uber driver and they speed, I'm like, bro, I ain't trying to sure. die in no car accident. I I Think about all of that type of so shit. So what the, what, the internet, what the internet essentially does, though, is creates this world in our heads that the world is way scarier and way and worse. And smaller. And smaller than it really is. So in our heads, we're walking around like, oh shit, there might be a military coup in New York because there's a military coup in Turkey. There might be a black dude who gets shot and killed for no fucking reason because that happened in Minnesota. And then my, my girl or my mom or somebody might get raped because that shit just happened in Alabama. Hey, man. Like, what the fuck? Well, guess what? We need more. We need more things that help us build cases of optimism. Because right you, now, you all need we the have, balance. All we have, no, we need more than the balance. It's got to be 90-10. ten. I'm telling you. Listen, I would never have gotten to where I am in life if I grew up the way I am growing up now. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I, you cannot let your daughter watch television. You gotta, you gotta shield her. <laughs> Seriously, you gotta shield her from. You, you gotta but. shield her from all of this stuff. Like you gotta plant those seeds of of optimism in their brain. You yep. gotta, you gotta teach them about the law of attraction. You gotta teach them about positive energy, the power of positive thinking. Yep. It's almost impossible to do so in 2016. You brought up a dope ass point, which is, and you just said this too, Chris. You said you don't let your daughter watch TV, right? And you're like, you gotta not let your your daughter watch TV, right? Mm -hmm. How is that that much different? When the Chinese government says, you know what? We're not giving anybody Facebook. We're not giving anybody they're social media. That. So what they're doing is that we look at them like these crazy dictators are controlling shit. Are they? Or are they I'm the protecting, dictator of my house. Are they protecting? They're look, protecting I'm not making minds. an argument for right. dictatorship. What I'm saying is in their minds, maybe they're not going, I'm an all-powerful dictator. Maybe they're going, listen, we can't 
allow our people to see all this information because they will get a skewed view of the world because of it. Yes, listen, you have to dictate your mind. I'm telling you, man, listen, I grew up reading every self-help book in the world. I had my mother and my father telling me that, you know, you could be anything that you want to be. You could do anything that you want to do. Like, you shield your mind from yep. so much bullshit. Yeah. Like, you don't even realize 95% of this shit is going on in the world until you get older and expose yourself to it, right? Yep. But... By then, hopefully, you've made it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you've by created, by yeah. then, you've graduated high school, you went to college, you got your degrees, and now your eyes are open and you're like, holy shit. Okay. Whoa. We are not getting the chance to do that in 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can freak, exactly. yourself, look, you can uh, freak yourself the fuck wife, out. Yeah. True, real talk, wouldn't have sex last night because of Trump. Like, literally, like, we went out for drinks and, you know, after we got the kids uh, to bed, I was like, yo, you know, and she was like, I'm just really stressed out. I don't know. I don't feel really relaxed right now. And <laughs> yo, I, was like, yo. I was like, what's up, the matter? Yo. I was like, what's the matter? And she was up, like, yo. that's real. Just Trump. I'm worried about Trump. That's I was real. like, yo, fuck Trump. What are you talking <laughs> nah, about? Nah, ain't no fuck Trump, yo. And she was it's like, yo, I feel like, she's like, I feel like if he gets elected, there are going to be people walking around trying to kill me. And I was like, fuck this guy. She's right, though. I know, I know she's right. She's but it's right. like the same thing. This weekend, we went away with a bunch of families to Fire Island. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of kids in the house, all like between the ages of six and eight. And the adults are talking about Trump all weekend, right? Mm -hmm. And one night the kids had trouble getting to bed. All the kids were freaked out. And we were like, what's the matter? They're like, we're scared Trump's going to get elected president. And I was like, Trump is the new boogeyman. We're fucking these kids' <laughs> heads up. Trump you know, is the new like, boogeyman, yo. Like, yo, I really hope Trump doesn't get elected. But guess what? Have sex. Raise your kid. You know, like, yeah, it's yeah. going to be all right. We're going to figure it out. We if don't know everything's going to be all right. That's uh, the problem. Okay. You're we right. won't know right. until November. Here's my question, which is important why we go about, out and vote. But here's my question. I wonder this, right? I wonder if if the news that we got was actually a correct depiction of statistically how the world is, right? Like, let's say for every single person that got, you know, let's say every single per time the cops killed... Uh, a black dude, right? Every time that was played on the news, right? The equivalent amount of interactions where a cop didn't kill a black dude was played in that news. Nobody clip. would care. And and here's nobody a, would care because no, there's nothing to talk about. It, it's, it's not a story. It's, now, nobody now, would care. I'm not trying to discredit the fact and, that and this I'd is happening. And I'm so hung up on watching this guy just get killed by the police. I would miss the next story. I would as soon as they show me, bow bow bow, yeah, cop yeah. killed a black. God damn, another one. What the fuck? I'm yeah. talking over the lady who's saying. But it was 20 other instances where nobody did. And they're trying to do that right now. You see a lot of videos coming out right now, viral videos, where they show these cops going to barbecues and dancing with people sure. and playing basketball with little kids. We don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck, We man. don't give a fuck. We, I mean, yeah. no, we do. We no, do. We're we're not, everybody's, giving that, everybody's giving that cop in Arkansas, I think it's Officer Norman. I think Norman, Officer is. Norman. Yeah. Everybody's giving him a lot of props. I don't know what it is about him that's making everybody gravitate towards him, but... You know, they fuck with him. And Seems by the way, like he, he got a black wife. Community. He got a black wife, yeah, which is huge hey, points. Huge right. points. Hey, right, right. Hey. Hey, I mean, Dr. Omar black Johnson pussy. wouldn't believe in it. But it was, <laughs> hey, that black pussy. Hey, man. A black woman to change your life. You see what Michelle Obama's ass look like. Okay? You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why you need more interracial freaking relations. I believe that. Listen, I've been shooting a movie the past couple of weeks, right? I've been in L.A. Um, every weekend from like Thursday to Sunday. Thursday to Monday. And I, it's, it's directed by Joseph Kahn. If you don't know who go, Joseph Kahn is, Google him. Mm -hmm. I know, of course, Chris knows who Joseph Kahn is. Asian. Of course. <laughs> right? So um, the woman there was a woman named Kelly. I'm like, damn, they, they, they don't got no barber on set? And they was like, they do, her name's Kelly. Okay. First of all, this is just me. Call me what you want. A woman cutting my hair. I'm like, all right. I'm already like, no way. I'm not letting a woman sure. cut my hair. That's spot off top. Yeah. Then she's white. So... <laughs> me, me, right? Me being the person I listen, am. Do you let Jews make your bacon? Listen, <laughs> hey man. So, Let's just keep it. Hey, around. I'm being I'm okay. So I said, you know what? I really need a haircut. You know, I can't be in this movie with the grades popping in. I got to get a haircut. I just got to get a haircut. Yeah. I'm not leaving here to go to the barbershop where on the outside of Compton, I'm not going to no barbershop in Compton. I'm just not mm -hmm. risking it. I got a Chicago Bulls gear. It's red in it. I'm not doing it. Right? <laughs> okay. So I walk in. Her name is Kelly. I say, Kelly, I'm letting you know right now. I'm going to trust you with my hair. This can either improve race or really hurt race relations in America right now. All right? I'm letting you know that off the top. All right? And, and, and before that, I go, to tell me about yourself. How many barbershops have you cut in? How many, how many black people's hair have you cut? What kind of black people's hair do you cut? Like, are you good with a razor? Like, I'm asking all these questions. She's telling me. She's like, no pressure. I got you, whatever. 
Tap me down. Gave me two great haircuts this weekend. Really? Two. I mean, a, a white woman. <laughs> I mean, I mean, two stereotypes dispelled. I mean, a white woman <laughs> cut my hair amazingly. That right there improves race relations in America like that. I'm telling you, because I look at it, I'm like, Hillary, Hillary, hey, Hillary. Hey, man. <laughs> no, I'm voting for Hillary for a whole other reason. Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz actually solidified my vote for Hillary. Hey, listen, but if Hillary could do a hot top fade, what? <laughs> You'll find out Hillary can cut some goddamn black man Shit. hair. What? Better than hot sauce? Man, that's, that ain't even pandering. That explains that's the hot skill. sauce. <laughs> Listen, when Ted Cruz said, vote with your conscience. Yeah. That let you know. It's like, all right. Yeah, because it was two things. When uh -huh. Ted Cruz, the two best lines of the, the both conventions so far was Michelle Obama's, when they go low, we go high line, uh -huh. and Ted Cruz, vote with your conscience. Uh -huh. When Bill Clinton gave that speech last night and he Oof. told the same story that Hillary told us on The Breakfast Club about how they met mm -hmm. and how they got engaged and he bought her a house and everything, it humanized Hillary and it made you realize, well, at least made me realize, yo, Hillary's a woman. Like, we don't look at her like that. We look nope. at Hillary like a caricature. Like, yeah. she's Hillary Clinton. Like, she's like she's a... Simpson. The pants. She's a Simpson. Word up. Yeah. She's something Matt Groner created. Like, she's yeah. a... She's a character. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Where, the pre where the pictures of her pregnant? We don't believe she was ever pregnant. Like, she's Hillary, <laughs> like she's Hillary Clinton. Like, like, we don't look at her like a regular... <laughs> Human being, we yep. forget that she's a woman. Yep. Bill humanized her. Ted Cruz said, vote with your conscience. My conscience says a woman has never let me down in my life. From my mother to my grandmother to my wife, mm -hmm. I have no problem banking on a woman. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Mm -hmm. Period. And when he broke down how she makes everything better. That shit was like, that's what women do. That's what organized women do. My wife can make anything better. You know right. what I've done to my house since we moved in? Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. Zilch. Actually, that's not true. Nada. You paid for it. Yeah, but guess what? That's a if, big but, deal. But if I, <laughs> listen, imagine if I was single with no family. Oh, forget it. I'm in a fucking big ass house for no reason. Feeling forget stupid. It. No furniture. Hell all, I got, all I need is a TV and a fucking remote and a that's futon. It. A nigga. single guy's house literally got a futon, an animal house picture Amen. on the wall. Amen. That's it. You got some milk in the fridge. A woman Nothing. makes a house a home. And I'm, I think hey. Hillary Clinton can make America a home. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, I understand that y'all yep. got issues with her, the whole 94 crime bill, but like we said, talked about the other night, Hillary didn't sign that bill. Yeah, that's the thing I was telling <laughs> you yesterday. It's like people are giving, people are bashing Hillary for Bill signing the crime bill. Bill and Bernie signed the crime bill. Bill and Bernie signed the crime bill. I don't have any problem with that. My biggest issue recently with Hillary was I was under the impression that, uh, so Debbie Wasserman Schultz was the head of the DIA, the Democratic National Party or whatever mm -hmm. like that. And uh, she basically helped rig the election for in Hillary's favor. I don't know how ethical that is, what she did. I think it's pretty fucked up. But my understanding was after she stepped down that Hillary was going to hire her to be part of her campaign. And that shit was insulting to me as a voter. It's insulting, but, but that, I don't think that that I've read other reports saying that that isn't true. So she didn't hire. Her. So, yeah. So so basically, I mean, there's conflicting reports going out. But the fact that if she didn't and after Bill Clinton's speech, which was Bill Clinton is fucking incredible. We know that. already. Holy shit. Yeah, I'll tell you about the every veteran? once in a while, you need a little reminder how dope Bill was. Yo. Bill, listen, I know Bill oh. was dope when he got head in the Oval Office and didn't get shit. impeached and kept his marriage together. He kept his marriage together. When he said together. last night, God when he damn. said last night, Hillary never quit. Yo. Hillary didn't quit on me. All I wanted Bill to say, Bill, you can go down as the realest nigga living right now. If all you say was, at the hardest time of our life, when I was about to be impeached for my infidelity, mm -hmm. Hillary didn't quit on me. You ain't even have to give no details, bro. Yeah. All you, if you would have said that, yeah. I would have been like, we're voting for Hillary right now. But he right said now. it really. He, he did say it. a cigar. I know, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Charlotte was holding a cigar hey, man, right I'm now while he said that. Hey, because you know why? I'm hey. all for people keeping their marriages together. Yeah. And Bill, yeah. was Bill, Bill was at that point where Hillary could have left him and looked like the people's champ because everybody would have understood. You publicly embarrassed me like that? Yeah. You're the fucking president getting head from this ugly bitch yeah. in the Oval Office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. But she a, held it hey, down, listen, bro. Listen, she held it down. I'm going to be honest with you. I think... I think that uh, Hillary could go down as the president that accomplishes the most while being least liked. Because likability is all about charm, yeah. right? Likability isn't necessarily patting your pockets. Everybody could be doing well. The economy could be doing well. Gas could be low. All these things could be going perfectly in terms of what we want from a president, yeah. what we want from our country. But she just doesn't have that same switch that Bill has, that ability to turn that thing on on a massive stage. I did hear a lady speaking on MSNBC last night saying that if you 
if you talk with her, and you have even echoed, echoed these sentiments, if you talk with her on an interpersonal thing, like if it's a small group, she's very connective. Very connected. Very she's a good listener, really cares and effective. the whole time. Yeah, and even now, said that joke. send you to classes for stuff like that. No, no, but you told me the joke that she said that has resonated with me. You were like, they said that you're pandering for black people, and she looked at you, is and she's working? like, is it working? That shows humor to me. Yes. That show, that's and, not and, robotic and, and killing. If you're really, oh no, that whole interview we did with her wasn't robotic at all. But my whole thing is, if you're pandering, this, if you're really truly pandering to somebody, yeah. you're not going to tell them you're pandering. The exa- ex- that, you're not going to tell them because you would feel guilty. Yeah, you yeah. feel guilty. And we had this conversation the other day. We talk about you know Bernie. Everybody loves Bernie because of the civil rights work that he did. Hillary did a lot of civil rights work too. Sure. I don't know why Bernie's gets magnified more, but B- B- Bill broke down a lot of it in his speech last night. I knew about what happened in the South Carolina jails. I asked her about it during the Breakfast Club interview. I knew about that because I've heard about that throughout the years. How Hillary came to the jails in South Carolina and wanted to know why they were taking little young black boys and throwing them in the motherfucking cells with grown ass men. Yep. Like she then she came down there and fucking exposed that shit. Yep, yep. She went undercover so and at, at the schools in um Arkansas Texas? or Alabama. I thought it was Texas. Maybe it was Texas. I don't remember. But all I'm saying is... To help desegregate them? Yeah. She's been on the front line. She just wasn't in politi- in politics to get the credit for it. She Chris Morrowed mm. it. Really, when you think about it. Mm. She did the Chris Morrow. She got her name in the little font and she didn't get the yeah, same credit. she wasn't a politician at the time. She wasn't a politician. She was, she was working for legal firms yeah, and she was yeah, working... Yeah, 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 she was yeah, working yeah. on the private so- sector, I guess you could say. Yeah. But... When you're a president, you get the credit and you also get the blame. And when you're a politician, you get the credit and the blame. Well, you're not being fair to her. I mean, like, this is an argument I was having with my uncle where he was, like, explaining why he was going to vote for Trump. And he's like, well, she's not qualified. And I'm like, no, what? No, 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 no. I mean, you guys are, you guys are just what? like, Charlotte you guys this are from skating the beginning that over the, the fact qualified. that she was the secretary of state. She was a senator. First lady for eight, eight years? years? Like, she's what? the most qualified person. <laughs> but this is something. What? That's what I said to my wife yeah. last night watching this shit. I was like, yo. What was she for New York? Sec- senator. Senator, senator of New York. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I felt I only watched last yeah. night. I haven't Post watched Post 9-11 Senator, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I felt last night the number one theme that they were trying to push was woman, 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 woman. Mother. Mother, Mother was huge. And woman. Yeah. Which is smart, and I understand why they're doing it, but I'm like, you guys are just glossing over the fact that this person, forget about woman or man, is incredibly experienced, right? Like, it's she's not even been, close. She's been inside the White House at the highest level of power for eight it's years. not even close. Then was a senator. It's literally Kim Kardashian right. saying she can play basketball better than LeBron James. Like, it's literally... If Kim was to come out right now, right now and be like, you know what? I, I should be in the NBA. Right. I could be a better player than LeBron James. The collective shut the fuck up forever that would come from social media would be resounding. There is nobody on the face of the earth who would agree with Kim. So why do we agree with Donald Trump? Because people are desperate, man. When you're desperate, you believe in hope. When you're desperate, you believe that some magical dude returned from the dead and walked on water. Mm. You know, like that's desperation talking right there. When you hungry, you can believe in anything. Yeah. When I'm starving I'm and hungry. a motherfucker says, yo, there's food down the block, yeah. I want to believe there's food down the block. Jesus took one loaf of bread and one fish and fed yep. 70 million so, people. Shit. Well, we're bring them over then. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cookout? Right. I'm hungry in this bitch and all I got is a loaf. You know how many times we've been sitting around with Hennessy, bottle with Remy and the bottle's empty and you like, like where's Jesus? Turn water to wine. <laughs> where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Turn some of water to Kanye. Turn water to Remy though. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm I'm rolling with Hillary. Number, number one, she's the most experienced. And guess what? I don't care if I like you or not. Can you get the job done? And there's you're nobody, thinking logically, though. There's nobody you're going to agree with 300%. Nobody. Yep. 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 Like, there's absolutely positively nobody on this planet. There's no candidate. There's no activist. There's nobody you're going to agree with 100%. The people that I love, mm-hmm. some people hate. Yep. You bring up Minister Farrakhan. Oh, he killed Malcolm X. You bring up Malcolm X. Oh, I didn't like Malcolm X. He hated white people. Mm-hmm. You bring up Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, he had mad side bitches. Like, everybody got yeah. something to say about somebody. But my thing at the end of the day, can they get the job? Can they get the job done? Do they do more good than harm? And can they get the job done? And I think this is, and can they get the job done for me, right? And I think this is something that oppressed groups in in the United States, but around the world should should think about. We were talking about this a little bit this week, but like, you know, 
as, as far as as far as black people go in America, and I think you've even talked about, or maybe it was Farrakhan you were talking about talked about this, like why we shouldn't be associated with either party. We don't necessarily mm-hmm. have to vote Democratic or Republican. Mm-hmm. Like you have to earn your vote. I, I I agree with that wholeheartedly in the in, in in essence in terms of like if black people voted as a block, right? And that block was these are the issues that we want. Right. And we want a candidate that will address these issues. Mm -hmm. We want investigations when anybody is killed under police custody. We want uh, we want uh, laws that prohibit black people from getting home loans that don't prohibit any other race in America from getting those loans. We want all these things struck down. And whatever candidate said that and you go with that, I'm okay with it, even if you disagree with other things on that candidate's platform, because when you're in a position of inequality, you have to reach equality before you can help other people. I really do believe in that. Mm -hmm. So while it's nice to sit here and go, oh yeah, well we gotta also help this group, and we have to help that group, and we have to help this special interest group, until, for white people in America, they have the ability, we have the ability to go, okay, I want to help LGBTQ, I want to help black people, I want to help Asians, I want to do these things, because Mm -hmm. we are good. For the most part, some white people, not all white people, because them poor white niggas down south that in the Midwest that riding riding for Trump are not good. No, no, I don't mean good economically. I mean good systemically. They're not good systemically. Either. I think systemically they're okay. Nah, I, I, I don't. White I, people don't even like poor white trash white people. Oh no, nobody likes poor people. Exactly. But 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 <laughs> I'm talking about systemically. I'm talking about like when you go to get a home loan, their white skin won't be used against them to get that home loan. Maybe I don't know. No, no. F- this is facts. This is not even. If you, this it, is not even. It's what, not what, even. What, to if be Uncle Cy, if Uncle Cy walks into a bank from Duck Dynasty with mm-hmm. no teeth and the camouflage, mm-hmm. and you know, it'd be like, eh, I don't know, buddy. But then they show his net worth, and he'll get a fucking. Not, bank I'm not loan talking about actual second. Uncle Sai. I'm talking about somebody that looks like. Uncle sure, Sai. sure. But what I'm pointing is, they'll there 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 are laws. My buddy sent this article, and I'll I'll post it on Twitter so I can get it. But uh, he's he's he, he's one of these higher ups at Walmart. He's, and he's basically showed me that there are there are rules set in place where banks can be prejudiced based on race because they can use race as a defining characteristic in a person's ability to pay back a loan. I don't think you should be able to use skin color. I think you should be able to use f- finances, but not skin color to do that. You know, that's basically what Dr. Umar was saying. You know that, right? No, that's not what Dr. Umar was saying. That's basically no, what it's saying. not what Dr. Umar was saying. That's and don't get those two saying. things conflated. Dr. Umar is taking saying. that idea and he's manipulating it in a way that's, that's not logically or he factual. It's hard for minorities to get loans. Nobody's disputing that there is a disadvantage to people of color when it kind of not all people of color actually to black people when it comes again loans. Nobody's disputing that fact. What he was doing is manipulating those facts and twisting those things to make something an he egregious said, error. He said the same an thing egregious, you said. No, he's saying he said that. It I was, think you disagree with the no, deportation he was saying, thing. No, I absolutely disagree. Which with I that. agree. But he was with. also saying that black people just weren't getting loans at all. Which they he just said harder to. No, he said they weren't at all because he was saying that Asians were able to get loans and that's why they're opening up all these stores in the ghetto and black people weren't true, able actually. to get loans. But well, Asians aren't getting loans. I, I mean, well, I mean, we're, we're, we're painting in stereotypes, so I'll keep doing it that way. But like traditionally, the Asian communities, the way they open all the businesses, because they pool their they money pool their resources, and absolutely. cash and they use cash and absolutely they so don't deal with banks. Which, which, what Another, the, which what the Nation of Islam has been telling people to do forever, by the way, by the way, absolutely. Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan, Malcolm X have been telling people to pool, black people to pool their resources yeah. and do exactly what the Asians and Jewish communities do. They've been saying that forever. And, uh, and, that, and that, he's, that's a misnomer, but I, actually, well, while, while I was in Taiwan, people were actually hitting me on Twitter asking me to weigh in about the whole Jewish pool the money, use that as an example thing. Mm-hmm. That's a wild exaggeration, man. Mm-hmm. Like Jews don't do that. I mean, when you're talking about Jews, are you talking about Jews like me or just break, you know? People? No, we're not talking about Jews like you. We're talking about do Jews that are involved that? in the community. No, the Hasids. Do you know how the Hasids get ahead? Oh. It's not by pulling the cash. It's by fucking milking the government yeah it's by off of you and me and schultz and there and i can say it because you can't call me anti-semitic they i'll are, say it too we pay for they are shit. gaming the fucking system Absolutely. you know you know barack gave them another 60 million last year and do you them. know why that is for holocaust survivors. you know why that is oh well that's different that, for all the i don't cost, know about that that's i don't know about that that's a fact. but do you know why they get well, these it was, it was it was 14 million okay do you know why they get these benefits why? because they vote in a block they vote in a block they and do that exactly the what their leaders tell them to do and the government, and I'm just talking about New York City, I don't know anywhere else, but I live in Crown Heights. Mm-hmm. If you go into any of these stores in the Jewish neighborhoods, which they don't want you to do, take a peek in the cash register. All you're going to see is food stamps. Mm-hmm. Nobody fucking pays for cash around there. Sure. All the real estate is all government subsidized. subsidized. They have all houses. these guys who yep. claim that they're students and getting student loans and doing all the, hold on, what are you sending me? 
Oh. Listen, I agree with that. All right, Holocaust survivors. That, that's not who I'm talking and, about. And I'm talking about his Sid specifically. And I don't, I don't. Dispute, but are you I listening dispute, to what he's saying? I agree. Though? But I, like I and told they you, get that power because they vote in a block. But like I told you, that will work on a local level. It won't work on a federal level. You need it on a local level. Yeah, when we're it, talking it, about policing, will, Charlemagne. Policing yeah, is a I told local you, I told you that will work on a local level. I don't think it'll never work on a federal level. What, why? It why can't work on a federal level. Why won't it? It sure can. I don't think it can just because of sheer numbers. But why? Tell us why. Because of sheer numbers. It's just not enough people. How many? How many? What's the population of Jews in America? Under two percent. Do they really affect the presidential nominee? Absolutely. 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 How? Because their wealth is not representative of their amount of people. I, I just don't. Their see wealth is representative of far greater that's, that's than like, the amount of people they are. I just, mean, the guy who's giving the most money to Trump is a Jew. Uh, okay. Shelley, whatever his name is. Okay, we're talking about guy. money. But and he's if, a problem, by the way. What if every Jewish person in America said, "You know what? We're not voting this year." It wouldn't affect anything. That's all I'm saying. No, but if every Jewish, per, if every Jewish in America, uh, uh, if every Jewish person in America who was a donor said, not that we're not voting, we we're, are donating we're to shifting this our money. candidate, absolutely. that would absolutely do it. But how, so, so how can but, black, but you said black people need to vote in blocks. And I'll tell you this, how and I'll that, tell you how us? the difference was. Black people represent, what, 125 to 13% of the country. Yep. They actually represent 23% of the voting amount so the the amount of people that are voting in general black people that are voting in general is almost double the representation of the amount of black people that are and that is because not everybody in america votes right so when you represent 23 percent of the voters in america that is a huge chunk of voters especially when it comes to swinging right so when you have elections decided by literally five percent Right. Right. Usually which election goes 55 to 45. This one be. might be 55, 45. For now. And you have 23 percent to shift. That is a huge fluctuation. If all black people said, you know, what, we're voting for Trump, the Democratic Party will literally flip its fucking shit. And vice versa. If all black people say, hey, we're voting democratically, which they usually will. The Republican Party will. will, will I, they're not going to freak out because this is something that's expected. But I'll be honest with you. And when I was talking about Van about this yesterday, and I was even talking to you this morning, black people, for the most part, if the Republicans paid any attention to them, will would would vote Republican. But they never vote. They they never pay attention to us because they know that historically we vote Democrat. Yeah, but here's the thing: when it comes oh, no, to the I mean, actual, historically they were Republicans. Historically, they were Republicans. That's back in the day. I mean, if you look at radical Republicans, these are the people who abolished modern slavery. Day. Modern day, yeah. modern day. Absolutely. There was a shift after the civil rights movement absolutely. where the absolutely. South went absolutely. Republican. It used to be Democrat. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. right. So Hillary uh, was Republican at first. At first, absolutely. So, so, but when you look at the ideology, right? When you look at a lot of black people in America, right? Religious folk. Right. Religious Christians, mm -hmm. not very supportive of the LGBTQ community, not very supportive of homosexuals, not very supportive of abortion. Right. When you look at and who doesn't want lower taxes, when you look at Republicans, religious people, not very supportive of LGBTQ community, not supportive of abortion, Christians and want lower taxes. All Republicans really need to do to sway these re elections is go, hey, black people, you know what? Absolutely We need not. to fuck with you. We are sorry that we've Absolutely. ignored you. We want to do everything to help you out. You know how many gay black people it is, Schultz? Not yeah. enough. Literally all of Atlanta <laughs> would be like, fuck you, Republicans. Are you crazy? And they and and you know would be on the read denouncing the shit. And the rest like, of black know, people would be like, you know, fuck them. Nah, we don't like them anyway. True. That's not true. Hey, that's not true. You that's not true. First of all, black people are the most loving we are the most of gays? Listen to me. We are, are you out of your mind? Black people are way more e down with equality than probably any other race. <laughs> that is a fact. What are you talking about? Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Dude, get the fuck well, out of here. Let me ask you a question. What, 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 you, you're you telling me oh, no, black people well, about, are the most about. loving of homosexuals. Give me some evidence, shows. What you basing this on? I'm only thinking of religious. A religious aspect. I think black people are more religious on the whole than white folk. And I think anybody who identifies with religious is going to be more homophobic. Most gay people are in the church. Say again? Most gay people are in the church. We're not talking about Catholics sucking little boy dicks. I'm not talking about Catholics either. I'm talking about regular talking about? sovereign Baptist church. Most gay men are in the church. And what, in the and what is... In, he said in the choir. In the choir. Most gay, most gay <laughs> I put men, the qu in most, choir. <laughs> most gay men are in the church. Uh, the, what do you mean most? No, they're not. Yes, they are. How, how, give, me facts. Black church? give me facts. Give me facts to back that up. When the last time you been in a black church? Give me facts to back that up. When the last time you been in a black church? When I was in Aruba. This guy said in Aruba. <laughs> uh, you, you, I'll tell, say, I mean, yeah, there uh, was a church since, there, since and I, love, assume, since I assume you, that it's since, mostly black. It's mostly you, black since you love video so much, yeah. pull up the video of the gay man saying, I am delivered. I am delivered. In the, that, man, I am deli <laughs> that man was in the church for years. And you didn't see the black people in that and video? Like, oh, okay. And by the way, by the way, Bishop Betty Long. 
gets more dick than anybody. Allegedly. Okay. All right? Allegedly. Oh, okay. Allegedly. No, it ain't too so, alleged. So you I'm think, just saying allegedly protect us when so the you think that you think that, uh, okay, so you think that, that black people, when it comes to homosexuality and the LGBT I community, think that are the most people, open-minded race? I, th- I think that black people overall are accepting of the LGBT community. I think hip-hop is not. And I think a well, lot of... hip-hop isn't and, all black and, people. I know that. And yeah. I think a lot of older black people... Just like any other thing. I think a lot of older black people probably aren't as accepting as the LGBT. But the majority of, if you're like 30, I'll say 40. Then why is there so much under? pushback against the right, for instance? Because niggas are retarded. But that's not oh, all black people. Oh, but that's not all black people. Oh, now, man, now, now, that's not all black now, people. now they're retarded. Okay. But that's not all black people. That's what I keep saying. So where the, like, like, like I've been telling you all week, black people are not a monolith. Like, Put it like this. Let's just go back to what we just talked about. We're not talking about monolith. We're just talking okay. about percentages. Let's go back to what we. I don't know the percentage. That's, we, we don't. Know. How do you prove homophobia? I can't prove homophobia. Let me finish my point first. Okay, go. This is why we can't. Somebody like D-Ray. You say it's so much pushback against D-Ray. Right. I support D-Ray. I, I'm black. You're not black. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I. I support him. Clearly, he has a bunch of supporters because when this guy was in jail, everybody. Like, I mean, every rappers, everybody. You know why? Because we believe in what he's doing. That guy's out there on the front line. That guy's protesting. And I believe this wholeheartedly. This is just me. I feel like whenever somebody is really trying to make a difference, whenever somebody is really trying to make a change, when they have a lot of opposition, that's how you know they're real. They're doing work. That's that's when they're doing work. So the more opposition I see D-Ray get, that makes me want to ride with him more. Because I'm like, you know what? This guy's really putting in the work. That motherfucker was in the WikiLeaks. Like, they had him in the damn DNC WikiLeaks trying to discredit him, saying something about they wanted him to be a surrogate. And, um, but, but he lies about the protest he go to. Like, they made that a thing. Like, they're trying hard to discredit this little gay man in the vest. And it makes me wonder, like, why? It's not he's, he don't have an agenda. He's Other, a threat. He has the same agenda that we have. Yeah, he's a threat. We don't want to see unarmed black men getting killed. Right. And D-Ray is probably the least malicious, the least hostile. D-Ray is not anti, anti-police. He doesn't go out there and say negative things about the police. All he's saying is this is what we want done. And he has a plan. A 10-step plan. That's why they're scared of D-Ray. Because he's organized. Because he's organized. Not, woo, okay, okay, he's organized. Sure, but let's get back to uh, how do you prove homophobia? You how can't do you prove, really. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you can't I, even prove racism. That's what I keep trying to tell everybody when it comes to the police. You can't prove racism. Only thing you can prove is constitutional rights being violated. Like, they do investigations sometimes, and they find things that say, okay, there's systemic racism going on in these different, you know, police forces or in these different law enforcement agencies, but you really can't prove racism. Out of all of the cases we've seen— We're talking about homophobia. Let's not get off the topic. It's the same thing, No, it's not. It's not the same thing. You can't prove homophobia. It's not the same thing because there isn't uh, religious rhetoric and ideology that backs up racism. There is religious rhetoric and ideology that backs up homophobia. So it, there's nowhere in the Bible that says, hey, black people are wrong, but there are places in the Bible that say, hey, gay people are wrong. Yeah, gay, the, so, the, there's, gay, the so there's, so, so there's uh, this article that I just brought up, and I just go, to, I just Googled. So by your logic, every, anybody that's remotely associated with any religion is homophobic. No, I didn't say remotely. I said uh, that are more staunch believers and grew up in the church. And But that could be for anybody. But more black people. Do uh, you believe in the Bible? Uh, do I believe? No, absolutely not. Do you believe in the Bible, Chris? What do you mean? Do I believe in a? Of course I don't. You Some, believe in make believe. A lot of people believe in the Bible. Well, wait, you believe in zombies? No, everybody believes believe in, the Bible. in the Walking Dead is real. See, this, come on, that's that, that's that New Stop York. It. Don't Stop even it. know that people save the umbilical cord attitude. Do, listen, ninety-five percent of America believes in the Bible. Shows. Okay, okay, does that I, make I was, it right? Was, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christians, yeah. Baptists, America is full of Bible thumpers. That doesn't mean that it's right. Duh. That's what I'm trying to tell you. hundred percent of ISIS so, believes so, so in what they believe so in. That doesn't homo- mean that's you right. You can't base homophobia off religion. You can't say just because you're a religious person, you're homophobic. Wait, oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's, let's talk about that right there. Just, just because you're a religious person doesn't mean you're homophobic. Agreed. But if you actually believe the religion to what it's telling you to believe, then you will be homophobic. That's not true. If you believe being gay is wrong, that that's is homophobic. True. Yeah, but that's to have nothing to do with religion. Because once again, what does religion say? Listen, I believe in the Bible. I actually read the Bible and I actually read the Quran, have had for years. And just like anything else, just like people, it's certain things in the Bible I agree with, certain things I don't. It's like I tell tell y'all this story all the time. Brother Highest, God bless you. So you don't believe in the Bible then? What do you mean? You either believe in it all the way or you don't believe in it. No, we don't. 
That's not true. So God, we is, just we just had the same discussion I about would love you being. to sit down with God and had, be like, "Hey, oh God, you got about fifty percent right, dog. I, I give it up to you, this, dog. This is the problem. You got a good fifty percent. This, 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 this is the problem. Let's use some logic here. God didn't write the Bible. You absolutely right. And that's what I say all the, the King fucking James time. Version was written man by wrote about people. that. Wrote the, fifty two verses was written right? by man. King James Bible. Every 52, version. I know, but the King James version alone was written by fifty two people over seven years minimum. Somebody was going to get something wrong. Absolutely. People was going to slip in their own little shit. Lit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, they was going to do all that through shit. Somebody in there was yeah. like, you know what? I don't want my woman cheating on me. No you know, sex before marriage. Like, everybody was putting their own little shit yeah. in there. The you know when we fucked this shit up? Off. When they killed Jesus, they sp put the fucking holes in his hands so he couldn't write the Bible himself. And if they didn't do that shit, then we might have had a good version of it. But the reality is that they didn't. Listen, my thing is this. I've, I've, I don't believe in everything in the Bible. I treat the Bible just like people. It's some things in the Bible I agree with. It's some things I don't. How can you not believe in thou shalt not murder? How can you believe in thou shalt not yeah, kill? Of course. Like, but I don't look at those as biblical things. I look at those as moral things that they put in the Bible to Bible. maintain them. The Bible's them. an acronym. Basic instructions before leaving earth. So I think that they had the basic instructions. <laughs> First of all, that's not... A, no, it's not an acronym. Well, it's an acronym for me. <laughs> for Man, you it is. That's why I'm writing the book. It yeah, it's, that's a great acronym. Matter of <laughs> fact, Jizzle the Genius... I can't take credit for that. That's Jizzle the Genius <laughs> and Killer Priest from the Liquid Swords album. B-I-B-L-E. Basic Can I read this article real quick? This Go is ahead. what it says about... Um, uh, basically, it looked up who's... Okay, uh, Razib takes a question I posed yesterday specifically what is the best predicator of homophobia unlike lazy ass bloggers who sit around speculating Razib ran some data it has limitations and it doesn't address the specific claim that blacks are the most homophobic ethnic group in America for that? instance uh, this is the Atlantic.com for instance we don't have a comparison with other ethnic groups but it does answer two questions controlling for the variables of are blacks more homophobic than whites and is race the best predicator of homophobia so maybe race isn't the best predicator of it's it. not because clearly so, republic smart educated and very liberal Liberal blacks are less tolerant of homosexuals than similar whites. Okay. In fact, among downscale sectors, there isn't much difference, uh, much of a difference between whites and blacks. The difference shows up uh, uh, among the upscale. So, well, explain Republicans then. There isn't. Uh, most Republicans are poor. There isn't. No, explain. Well, explain. That's not true. But explain. Most Republicans are absolutely poor. What are you talking about? In terms of sheer numbers, that's that is absolutely true. I don't, Matter of fact, I don't most everything is poor because there's more poor people than rich people. Okay, but explain. Let me finish the thing. It there isn't much of a difference between fundamental uh, fundamentalists, what blacks and whites. There is a big difference between blacks and whites who consider themselves religious liberals. The former are far less homophobic than black fundamentalists, but note that they're not about as gay friendly as white religious moderates. Nothing, um, you re nothing you're reading is a fact. That's somebody's opinion. No, these are. It just said they've crunched data. For what, how? What do they do? Go around and ask people, do you like gay people? Hey, are you, you're a homophobic. Do you, do you like gay people? Yeah. That's what they do? Absolutely. Who? How do you know this, Schultz? Because that's what I'm... I, when they, Whenever you read a study, we have to who, take... What study is that? Who? From who? What? Bro, where? What, what, so Cite your sources. Just because... Theatlantic.com. And this man, Razib Ron. And who is he? So... What, you need to know his background to yes, see if his study is factual? Yes, I want to know who this person is. Yes, I do. Listen, the reality of the matter is, whether you <laughs> want to no believe it or not. The, the, the opinion of this matter is. Your, okay, so you don't believe it. So, so Dr. No. Umar Johnson's things are facts because he says them, but when I this never, guy says I, them, it not doesn't. Once here have I said Dr. Umar's facts. I specifically said some things I agree with Dr. Oh, Umar, sorry, some things I don't. I'm, my bad. And, and I specifically said I don't agree with him being Get the right, gay right. thing. You ready for this? You know, you want to know who this was written by? Who? Tanahisi Coates. Okay. Your boy. What's that mean? I don't agree your with him. Your boy. So I don't this, even know what that article's so about. So your boy wrote it. What is the so article about? So your boy wrote it. It goes, are blacks more homophobic than whites? It was an article that he wrote. So is this he is... Is he saying that they are? Because it didn't sound like he said that they are. Well, maybe if you let me it finish... Like, maybe if you let me finish the article, I could tell you. But your boy wrote it. But, 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 but <laughs> if, you had actually, if you had actually read that article, uh -huh. you would know whether or not he's saying homophobics. Black people are more homophobic. In short, blacks are indeed more homophobic than whites, but race isn't the best way to think about it. Uh, I think I'm getting that right. That so makes no your sense. boy, oh, so your boy Tennessee Coates says that okay, makes no can sense. Can I finish reading or no? Yes, but that okay. makes no sense. All that being said, I play around with multiple regression model by treating some of the categorical but ordinal variables as existing along a numerical interval. That is, homosex was dependent was a dependent variable on on a one of four one to four interval. I don't know what enter this shit means. Too smart for me. But the religious variables uh, and age were powerful predicators of the variation in attitudes towards homosexuality. But race, not so much. Not even statistically significant. I want to post the charts above because I don't necessarily trust these sorts of slapdash regressions, but my quick and dirty checks imply that race is a less powerful predicator than religion and age. Religion, like I said. So what's the predicate? It, what is he using? 
But he basically said exactly what I said, which is religion is a more powerful. Can you listen? Religion well, is how, more powerful. Can you listen? But what's got to do with blacks, listen? though? I don't can, get it. Like you, you can't say you can't say black. Can you fucking listen? No, I tell you, you can't say basically black. Basically, what he said is blacks are more homophobic than whites, but then say race isn't a predicate. You just used race as a predicate by saying that because blacks are more religious. So be, if religion if religion is the real pr predicator of homophobia, and blacks are more religious. Therefore, they're going to be more homophobic. Okay, just well, like your boy Andrew Schultz said originally, without facts. But here's some facts about well, to back well, it up. Well, if that's the case, written by your it's boy, it's clearly more religious white people than American and black people. You're right? talking, we're talking about percentages, not but, but no, mass answer, statistics. But, but we're talking about percentages. It has to be. Like, Absolutely. Okay, because there are that more logic, white people than black people. You're making so, dumb arguments. Why is I hate that dumb? These dummy why arguments dumb? you fucking make that, when you why? don't understand statistics. Stop making dummy why is that arguments, dummy argument? Charlemagne. So, you fucking annoy so me with that, that shit. Why, We're you, talking you, about but you can't talk about dummy arguments. Your We're whole talking existence about is a dummy statistics. Okay, but You're listen. talking about statistics. Well, wait, wait, the it's percentage well, wise. Will you answer the question? It's just like saying there's more racist people in China. No shit, because there's more. People in okay, China. So We're talking about statistics. Are you going to answer the question or are you going to keep fucking sounding like a dick? Ask the question. If it's more white people in America mm -hmm. that are following religion, wouldn't it be just as much or more white people that are homophobic as blacks? No, sure. Why not? We're talking about statistics. <laughs> We're it, talking about the percentage no of... Okay, the percentage of so you think that white people that are religious is lower than the percentage of black people that well, are religious. That's why y'all white devils then. Because if y'all make up 70% of the population, 60. and we only make up, well, 60, and we only make up 13, but y'all are less religious than black people, that's why y'all white devils and y'all need to get God in your fucking life. Because that's what basically you just what said. What kind of God? The God that you, I don't know. That you disagree God, with half God, of it? Whatever God y'all want to believe Again, a in. perfect Charlemagne argument where you just make a completely different argument that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. We're talking about right now about religion. And it shows that a predicator for homophobia is religion. If black people percentage-wise are more religion, these studies will indicate that black people are more this is, homophobic. This is, this is, this is but the ask. reality of the matter, like I said initially, is that religion is the bigger predicator of homophobia. It just so happens this that is, black people are is, more religious. This is what I want to ask. Uh, Tani say, yeah. How do you come to the conclusion that how you turn him into a Japanese person? How do you, how do Tani say? I can't never pronounce his name. Tani say. How do you come to the conclusion <laughs> that black people are more religious than white people? How do you come to that conclusion? Because they fill out surveys in the census every uh, ten years or whatever the census and what is, the, what is, is, what is that the say that they're religious. So black white people. That, Chris, does this make sense to you? Or maybe I'm confused because all I'm saying... Oh, you're right. He all, fudged all the statistics. He wrote a fake I'm article. I'm not fudging. I'm yeah, trying to figure out how he got to that conclusion. But, but mind you, this is the Andrew Schultz interpretation of that article. Maybe you need to read this for yourself. Because my whole thing is, how do you come to the conclusion that black people are more religious than white people? Like, how did you just come to that conclusion? I mean, you can say it. I mean, I think there's some... So you can't it's study hard. anything? I mean, it's like, look, we studying know historically is the church has played... A disproportionately large role in African American culture because it was like one of the few institutions available to them. But, right. So but, I guess you could but say white that, people but go to church. Not yeah, percentage. Know. Why can't you accept that percentage wise they don't, we don't go know as that, much? Though. We, we don't, don't know. That's what I'm saying. Show, all I'm supposed, I happen to show, agree with it, but I don't know it. Show, How about what, that? He proved you it. agree with it based off your experiences in life. My gut instinct is exactly, yes, it's true, exactly. but I don't have any exactly. proof. Who do you think's more homophobic? Who do you think's more homophobic? I think homophobia is a big problem in America. I think most people are homophobic. You PC answer, motherfucker. That's not true. PC. That's the it's truth. truth. Show. It's true. I don't know how you come to this logic. Like, like I think a lot of black people are homophobic, no doubt. I happen to know a lot. I think it's religious. They have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, if you take a black dude and know, you raise him outside the church, he's not going to be homophobic. I happen to know a lot of it. white homophobes, and they tend to be religious. Of so. course they are. Why would you be homophobic if you didn't have religion telling you to be? There is no and this, reason. And this goes back to my original point. Majority of Americans are into religion. So if you're any kind of Bible thumper, any kind of Bible thumper, and you believe what's in your Bible, you're going to quote unquote be homophobic. That's what I. That's my whole argument the whole time. And my thing is, but it's not just black people. That's what I told you from the jump. Nobody's arguing impossible. that it's just black people. Again, you're making arguments that nobody's you arguing. You just said it. No, I you never said, said it. You just said blacks are more homophobic based off religion. You no, said that. First of all, Tennessee Coates said it. No, that, <laughs> Andrew not said it first, I, and you Tennessee Coates to back up that point. Tennessee Coates, Tennessee, whatever his fucking name is, G E Z Coates said that it, he that they are more religious. And therefore, no, they said they are more homophobic, but if you're basing on, he thinks the main predicator of that is not their skin color, obviously, but the fact that they are raised in a culture that it is homophobic and that is due to the church. I agree with that statement. That was my initial thought process as well, because I'm going, why would I hate somebody if nobody ever told me to hate them? Simple question. If you say the church, 
all churches have the same thing. Exactly. It's not so like it's a LeBron what, James what version you, of the Bible in the black church and the King James version in the white church. All Bibles have the same Bible scripture, the same verse that says being gay is an abomination. It doesn't matter if you're white, it sure. doesn't matter if you're black, it sure. doesn't matter if you're green. If you're sure. in America or and you sure. study religion, sure. it's, it's that verse is in the Bible. So, what, so what how is, can you just pinpoint that and say it's black? Like that makes no, no sense. No, I'm not saying it's black. If anything, the, the do you know what should, more if means? anything I should say religious folks do, do you are know homophobic. What more means? What do you mean? Do you know what the word more means? Yeah. M-O-R-E? Like it's more white people in America. So by your, what you think is You it's really don't understand logic. math, bro. And I'm I, starting to and, worry about you. And I you. can't wait. I'm literally concerned. As long as I got more money than you, I'm for, fine. And you but do have more money than me. Right. You do right. have more money okay. than me. But with yes. your math ability, yes. you're going to always think that. No, I just no, want to put that no. out. With your math ability. Okay. Oh, here's a perfect example. Okay. You have more money than me, right? Okay. You have more money total than me. Okay. Right? Just like there's more white people total. Yeah. Right? I have less money than you, just like there's less black people total, right? Okay. But let's say I have a larger percentage of my money invested in hating gays so I told, than you do. I totally, right? I totally understand percentages, but guess so what? So that means I, but I hate. That means I hate gays more than you because I've donated. And, I've and, dedicated and, more of my money and, to and, hating and, and, gays. And, and you know what I'm telling you? Do you I, understand you that? Know, I do, and you know what I'm telling you? I don't believe that. Oh I, listen, God. I don't. Bro. I believe I believe that it's a disproportionate amount of. <laughs> I'm not listen, good at let me, math. Let me bro. say this real quick. When it comes to black on black crime, I believe it's a disproportionate amount of black people who kill each other more than white people do. Even though it's more than more white people, and that's the excuse they always like to use when it comes to black on black crime. Well, white people kill each other too. It's a disproportionate amount. Yeah, way more of black people. Say, yeah. and, it's, and guess what? I flipped the argument when it comes to police brutality. Because with police mm -hmm. brutality, they like to say, well. White people are getting killed by the police too, but it's a disproportionate amount based off the small percentage of black people that it is. It's the same thing with religion. I don't believe that it's disproportionate when it comes to religion. I don't believe that the black community is into the church and more religious than white people. I would say that is even if not more. It has, like, that, that makes, it has to be. So you think a larger percentage of white people... You know how many religions it is at, in America? Let me ask you a question. You think a larger percentage of white people are religious? If, if based off, based off, are, what is the definition of okay. religious? Into the, in, go, go to church every day and study the Bible. Is that or is that was that what our I, definition identify is? Identify as religious. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I think I think I don't know if I agree with that. No, the, it's it's absolutely not even close. It's not even close. The the percentages, and we can Google this right now. Chris, would you Google it right now, just so I, I can? Chris, can you Google it right yeah, now? Yeah, I don't know if there's Google any way what? to Google that. Google like, Google the uh, percentages of religious folks in America. Now we're gonna give you a study, and then Charlemagne's gonna go. Well, what's the proof of that study? Yeah, like how do you? That's I, what don't, I, think. How I don't do you, agree with that make, study. How, so you, that study what must do you not have proof. I mean, I'll look it up. But it's like, so what are you saying? In very what Basic I'm saying, terms, you're saying th if th you took 10 white people... There's more white atheists, and is what I'm saying. There's more white atheists people, and more white agnostic what? people than black people. Eight black people are going to identify right. as religious, and only six are going <laughs> to identify exactly. on the white side. It's, I mean, it's really... But it, this is... I mean, look, we shouldn't even be doing this because it's so it obvious, but please just look it up. Please just look it up. No, no, just do religious percentages uh, amongst all races. 83% of Americans identify themselves as Christian. Most of the rest, 13%, have no religion. That leaves just 4% as adherents of all non-Christian religions combined, which is Jewish, Muslim, we need, we need, Buddhist, we need, we need. We just need versions of... We just need. I just uh, looked it up! Ra you didn't look up race. You don't even know what we're doing right now. You're you not even paying attention. You said percentage of religious people in America. You don't even know what's going on. You this have no guy, clue what's happening in the conversation. You know look, I'm wrapping up. Listen. I refuse to argue with Andrew Schultz about nothing. I, I tell him I all the time. Just look up the argument. Just look up the argument. Here's, Can I Google what he told me to Google? Percentage of religious people in America. We're talking by race. We're talking by race. You said religious people. You just Charlie specifically man, shut Chris e down do and said, even, look up religious do people. Do you not even know what we're Time discussing You three in the room. Didn't Chris just say, you want me to look up white, black, and What are we discussing? What are we discussing right now? Religious people What are we discussing right now? By race. But you didn't it's say that. One by race. What are we talking about? By race. What are we doing? What are we discussing right now? By race. By race. Greg, what are we discussing right now? I want everybody to gets I want it but you. I want y'all to rewind Everybody this. in the room gets it but you. But let me guess, this. they're all white devils, so that's why they don't no, understand I want y'all to rewind this you. and I listen to you. him say I percentage of religious people we in America. know what we talking and about. after the fact, he said, by race, You are cool. moonwalking yourself out of this hey, argument that's why I'm so fast. That's, why that's you. what you do. Uh, <laughs> you are moonwalking. Before, before, well, okay. Go, go. I was just going to say, just switch gears before you leave. Can you have an intervention with your man? Ooh, Wax. About what? This whole time I've been here, my phone's going crazy. I gotta tell him he, he gotta stop doing it. He, he, he needs to grow the fuck up. He gotta stop doing it. He don't know who is who. 
He don't realize the shit he be fucking up. He sent the fucking. Can you tell me the text. statistics? I can't. I mean, it's, the statistics are all over the place. I mean, I can tell you what percentage of different religious groups I, you know. All I know is the percentage of religious people in America, 83% of Americans identify as Christians. That means nothing for argument. 13 have no religion. 4% are Jewish, Muslims, Buddhists, and everything else. So look up the people who, who don't identify as religious. They're saying 40% of white people identify as Christian. I don't but this is... I don't see it. So what percentage of so forty percent of white people identify as what percentage of uh, black people identify as Christian? Then just compare those numbers. If the number is larger for black people, then we saw the. I argument. bet you most black people that identify as Christian are Jehovah's Witnesses. That's still Christian. I know that. That's what I just said. I said so, I bet you the. I bet thanks. You, I bet you the most. I, <laughs> what does that have to do with the argument? Because it's different. Because it's Christians and then Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't actually Christians do different things. Christians celebrate Christmas. Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas. Okay, do they both celebrate they hating gays? Themselves Christian do they, they celebrate Jesus? hating gays? Both of them. What do you mean? Do they both hate gays? I Is really being don't know. gay? It, well, your your folks are Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, I never had that. I never. That, that the never, Bible that, that they read. Does it say that gay people? Every are, Bible gay is does. Wrong? That goes back okay. to my original so, point, shows That said, anybody who studies any religion in America mm -hmm. must have some type of homophobia. If you're any type of Bible thumper, sure, that's my you argument. You must have some type of homophobia. That's my argument. That's what predicates the homophobia. So my argument is just and that black goes back folks to, in so America how can you say are just more black. black folks in America are more religious than white folks. Therefore, <laughs> they're how, more homophobic. Once again, I don't know how a larger percentage of black people are. I don't believe that. How Actually, do you say again? Come here, yeah. come here, come here, come here. Okay. It said that fifty uh, more fifty three percent of Black Americans were identified as being very religious, with thirty three percent saying they were moderately religious. That stands in contrast to the thirty nine percent of White Americans who said they were very religious, and the twenty six percent who said they were moderately. Religious. So how do you now? Now, now where we at? It's a poll. Two thousand nine. It's a poll. Two thousand nine. You ain't shit, bro. You ain't like, shit. But that's not a fact. You're right. You're right. You're right. You know, black people just but switched not, it up in the last. But it's five not years. a fact. It's a poll, bro. So there's no evidence for anything in the Yo, world. You need to really start like. So there's no using some logic. To everything I'm not in saying the world. that's not evidence, but that's not. Bro, Chris, do you think polls you are, are facts? Crazy, son. You are absolutely Chris, are crazy. Facts? I mean, you know, it depends who's taking the poll. Have you? Oh, so okay. So if, if we poll this room, and everybody in here says that they like Joe Buttons, I'll name this podcast later. Are they better than brilliant idiots? Charlamagne. No, because there's not enough. Uh, the sample size isn't large enough. So we don't know the sample size of that poll. Well, if you're doing any poll, the sample size has know, to be large. This, this I, I took statistics. About you. You, you haven't taken a statistics shit class. About you haven't taken a you statistics class. You didn't ask that motherfucker who just told you a poll about sample sizes. Charlamagne. But now you want to bring up sample sizes. Charlamagne. Charlamagne. I'm getting the fuck out of here. When a poll is when a poll Listen, is man, conducted, I'm getting out of here. A sample size is used that that dictates. So why didn't you ask him about sample sizes? Can you can you just listen? What is it? No, you know what? I don't even give a fuck if he did. <laughs> exactly. If oh, Trump now, now, now you don't yeah, give a fuck. Exactly. Now you about if to Trump tell us. Now he don't give a fuck. If Trump so didn't now you about to tell us. I don't give a fuck either. Listen, because listen. it only matters if he's trying to win the argument. No, so it matters. I'm about to leave because uh, don't you run away from this argument? I'm not. I gotta go don't do Colbert. Don't you run I away go from Colbert this argument? That is dope. Again, by the way, congratulations. For the second time. Congratulations. Live. All right. Hey, I'm you know very supportive. Because all of this shit you talking about means nothing in the real world. Hey, listen. We talk about the real world. People like common sense. We talk about the real world. They don't like these bullshits that. Statistics and facts you pull out. Uh, yeah, they like my common sense. Say what you just said. Life. Bullshit, statistics, and facts. Mm -hmm. How can statistics and facts be bullshit? Because they're not statistics and facts. <laughs> Listen, That's a sample why. size. That's why. A sample size is representative of a population okay. beyond one or two standard deviations of the mean. So can I ask you okay? a question? Do you know what I just said? Yes, but can I ask you a question? What is a standard deviation? Can I ask you a question? What is a standard deviation? Can I ask you a question? Tell me what the motherfuck that is. Can I ask you a question? Because you're talking about somebody who studied this shit. Can I ask you a question? Go. Why didn't you ask your little man about the sample because size? Because I you, under, first, well, first of all, he's your height. So I don't, I don't I need you talking you know, about little man. Listen, I, I don't need you, you talking you know, about little know. man. I you're not going to discredit his poll because he's short. Just because he's little don't mean his facts ain't little. Let me tell you how Schultz works. If it would have been the other way around, which I'm sure I could find a poll that says it is, he'd have been like, Oh, well, what's the sample size? I don't believe the sample size. I don't believe that. What's the sample size? What's the sample size? Schultz is full of shit. <laughs> I'm walking out. <laughs> I'm walking. That was no, mean I'm, what I really you said to go. me. I'm walking no, out I really do right gotta go. now. I really do got to go. It's an hour for him. That I got, was I got shit mean. To do. But you said listen, something mean. Um, by the time this airs, I want to know what y'all think about Black and White. It's a show that premieres on A&E every 1030. I mean, every every Wednesday at 1030 p.m. Uh, I'm, I was on a premiere episode with Jim... 
Gaffigan. Gaffigan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was on there last night. I want to know what y'all think about that. And I want to know what y'all think about me on Colbert's show. I'm going to be on there. Tonight. So Tonight, you, which is actually be, Wednesday, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you won't hear this till tomorrow. Yeah. So I want to know what y'all thought about that, even though y'all probably already would have told me. And if you fell asleep, watch that shit in the morning. They got it on the, on the, on the internet. Yeah, watch it on watch it on a DVR or whatever. But I really do got to get the fuck about it. All right, hold that thought one second. We got some 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 news about live shows coming up that I want everybody to to listen to right now. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay? I have people tweeting me every single day, when is Brilliant Idiots Live coming to Los Angeles? Well, guess what? We fucking coming, okay? The Brilliant Idiots will now be performing at the Now Hear This Podcast Festival in Anaheim, California this October. There's going to be dozens of other shows there, including Mark Marin, How Did This Get Made, and The Moth. Tickets are on sale right now. Okay, they're on sale right now. You can register today at nowhearthisfest.com. Okay, nowhearthisfest.com. The early bird discount pricing is available now, but it ends Monday, August 1st at 10 p.m. Pacific. So sign up right now. Okay, we also got before that, we got August 27th. We're going to be at Columbus, Ohio, and we're going to be doing Brilliant Idiots Live right there. So make sure you get tickets to that. And you can get those at idiotslive slash brownpapertickets.com. Now, the hesitation tour, the summer 16 hesitation tour is still going on. Just had a dope show in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you guys so much for coming out and taking me to the strip club afterwards. Pure gold. That should be called pure carbs because those girls were thickums. Um, one girl even had toilet paper on her vagina. I thought it was a piercing on her clitoris, but it wasn't. It was actually toilet paper. And um, I threw a dollar and I caught it in the air before it could land on her and put it back in my pocket. But I got more dates. I'm going to be in Amsterdam the 3rd through the 6th of August. Okay, that's August 3rd through 6th. I'm going to be at the Tumler uh, f- comedy festival or something like that. Tumler, if you're in Amsterdam, you know what I'm talking about. But make sure you check it out right there. And then on the 7th, one night only... I'm going to be in London, okay? I'm going to be in London, and I'm going to be uh, doing uh, one show at the Backyard Comedy Club. You can get tickets at www.tickettex.co.uk slash andrew-schultz slash andrew-schultz. Just go to theandrewschultz.com, and you can get tickets to that show, my London show, and all my other tour dates for the Hesitation Tour. I'm going to be in Long Island on the 12th of August, and on the 14th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Factory in Baltimore, okay? Make sure you get tickets to those shows. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out and support. Now, let's get back to it. So, uh, once again, thank you very much to uh, Touch of Modern for sponsoring this week's episode of The Brilliant Idiots. Touchofmodern.com. Go there right now to get the best deals on top designers, the latest tech gadgets, tactical gear, and so much more. Guaranteed to have the best prices anywhere online. Touch of Modern is committed to bring your timeless and unique hand-selected products that will grab your attention. Charlemagne. That will grab your attention. Right now... Our listeners can immediate access to these amazing deals when they sign at touchofmodern.com. That's touchofmodern.com. Do it today because tomorrow is different. That's how life rolls in the fast lane. Oh. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're all a bunch of idiots, you're absolutely right. 